big and nasty. This is Matt MQ. The Standing Tall podcast commences very soon. Madam Q, Standing Tall Podcast, and uh, what a wonderful surprise to have the fantastic Gene Decode once again, and James Rink has joined us for uh, a very special show today, which is going to be action-packed, filled with thrills, and of course, a lot going on in the world, and we're very mindful and respectful, and 
of course, very saddened for anyone losing their life, no matter what side they're on in the battlefront. It certainly is uh, a tragedy when there is a loss of life. However, there is something very important behind all of this, which, of course, James and Gene Decode have a lot more knowledge than myself being uh, uh, Mr. Matt, the broadcast guy. Uh, but very, very important that we do discuss these topics today. And first, I'd just like to say a very big welcome to Gene. Hello. How are you? Thank you. It's an uh, honor to be back on your platform, Matt, standing tall against the cabal and with the amazing James, incredible James Rink super soldier guy um, that is one of the finest gentlemen I know and most respectful and uh, person I know. So it's, I'm in good company. Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you, Gene, for that. Uh, yeah. And um, for years, I've always been amazed by your brilliance for just just the amount of knowledge that you have. Uh, I I I I don't even think you're human. You, you got to be some kind of angelic being stuck in a human body there. But um, I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to not only be here with Matt, but you as well, Gene, and also the audience members as well. Uh, hopefully, we can um, for every time we do all this uh the goal is to always learn more information and to try to put together an idea of where things are going because i think that's what this topic of today's show is going to be about uh current events but i am involved i was involved or i guess i am um certain aspects of me are still active involved in the secret space program my website is supersoldiertalk.com and i also have a youtube channel called super soldier talk where i interview people involved in the secret space program including matt and i have interviewed you too gene so, um, yeah, that's just a little background info from me, and um, we can go from there, I guess, wherever you want to take this, Matt. Well, very humbled to uh, both of you as well. And uh, first of all, the last few months um, I've been, uh, of course, watching content, and uh, sometimes Gene and yourself throw a lifeline out there. You know, those days where sometimes we feel like, oh, my goodness, is there anything good happening? Is Am I deluding myself that there's change for the positive? And at times when uh, we're feeling at our lowest, I'm sure the audience would understand this and understand what I'm saying in that sense where uh, all of a sudden the information comes through where we can just, or I can just feel the authenticity in that and God's love coming through you both, which is a wonderful thing. So uh, I just want to thank you both for your service, doing what you do, and of course doing what we do here it doesn't come without its um, targeting or different little uh, issues that might happen with the computers or, um, you know, certainly other um, people out there that might make up uh, lies. Like one day Gene got an email saying that I was dead. <laughs> I wrote to him saying, um, yeah, look, I'll be courteous enough to write you an email and let you know if that ever happens. Um, <laughs> everyone spreads rumours. There's lots of things going on and it's... Um, dynamite uh, energy going on in the world at the moment the duality just fragmenting off with uh, the evil out there getting even more dark yet the ones that are filled with god's love and divine source we're getting more and more of our horsepower back and uh yeah i just wanted to find out first of all uh everyone's or well, both your snapshot on how you think things are going especially after the big marker point post um September um, the 9th, I think it was, when, yeah, we, we had the um, the Queen finally in a resting place. Yeah. How, what's your take on that? And I'm happy for you, you to go first, James. Uh, well, first of all, she's probably been on ice for the last six years. <laughs> I, or maybe she's a clone. I, I, think, I think she's been gone for a while. Um, I mean, if you listen to Ivan Teller's channeling, they he basically uh, views him, views the queen as just this giant big guppy, this baby that just, just all her needs or wants and desires are taken care of. She has really no control. Um, maybe she was positive, maybe up to the year 20 of your life, and then she just, <laughs> just totally got taken over. Um, as far as, um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a screenshot I want to share of um, this Twitter account that's really, this person predicted the queen's death about probably about six months prior. So on February 4th, 2022, the queen Elizabeth will die on September 8th, 2022. Whoa. And this person's got this, I mean, we can, we can go through some of these predictions and they've got some crypto predictions. I don't understand what these cryptic words are, but 
sell after 3M, after 1IU. So there's some information on your crypto. Um, here's a event here, something that's having to do with Facebook and Kalaroo Plus from finalizing publishing advanced AI technology, Metapal 1.0 on November 12th, 2027. So we don't have to worry about that one for a while. <laughs> a bit down uh, there's some, yeah, some viruses, uh, Serolo variant and also the uh, Amstrada variant in uh, 2049 and 2050. So I think we don't worry about that one for a while anyway. Some really cryptic Jeez. stuff here. I, I, this person claims not to be an AI, so maybe the only thing left could be an alien. But um, it says here, Earth will be completely engulfed in flames March 17, 2062. And interesting, a lot of remote viewers, once once they go past 2060, everything looks really bad. So like there's another war, but the timelines can dive. The timelines diverge around 2045 where we get, start getting cataclysms. Um, and then there's a timeline where that doesn't happen. So... So um, this one, another it says another announcement will be made impacting a former U.S. president November 18th, 2022. So we don't really know what that one is, but. And yeah, they're going on here saying, yeah, they're going to put some videos out there. They got a picture of how, which, is, by the way, actually is a real computer. The how not was it five, nine thousand. I forget which one series, but it was actually manufactured in Illinois. It was um, created by the tall whites, and it did actually kill the uh, the astronauts. But um, that uh, anyway. So there you have it. Maybe we should let Gene uh, decode this. Uh, what, what do you think, Gene? Are we we blowing your mind yet? And look at this. There's some kind of um, QR code here, possibly. Have you tried scanning that? Let's do it. I don't know, uh, Matt. You want to do it? Uh, you know what? I was just thinking. Then I had a flash in my head going, "What if it downloads some strange AI and it like you know, <laughs> <over> me?" <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I always got to be wary, right? But yeah, Gene, I'd love your thoughts on um, what James is presenting here. If you wish to add to it, well, the timelines are constantly divergent, um, back and forth. Currently, there's two primary lines of positive and then a negative set of lines that are going to Armageddon. So the negative lines have a lot of similarity with the positive lines currently on um, both of them. There's a fair chance that Trump on all of them, that Trump will be arrested and then he'll come out on the positive lines and wind up some of it, I don't understand how he could become Speaker of the House. Some of them are he becomes Speaker of the House. And then the uh, current individuals that are supposedly running the country, that actually the corporation are um, after he gets out. And it's actually he's in a military holding facility because he's insulated and uh, protected. But when he gets out, all of the truth comes out about all of the stuff about Mar-a-Lago, about the destruction of the rights of pretty much everybody like Judy um, Mikovits and the stuff they've done to her, all of that kind of stuff where they imprisoned people, to, you know, and raided their homes and taken their properties and taken them to court with and violated pretty much almost Ken every Bobby. right they had to the Constitution, like with Alex Jones trial, obviously kangaroo as heck, um, mm. almost every one of the bill of you know in the bill of rights every constitutional right he had in there was violated it's a show trial obviously to show that they can have gee the, well what, uh, what do you if, think do you think sandy hook actually happened um was that um a false flag since we're not on youtube we can talk about that yeah <laughs> boy that one's complicated depends on what line you're on <laughs> oh, that's well, the problem I, I remember reading a psychic who remote viewed it and she saw uh, these, it looked like they were four, two 14 year old kids um, uh, or may, maybe like, I'm sorry, 18 year old kids. They were dressed up in cloaks and they went in there. And they um, Adam Lanza had nothing to do with it. And then they hid in some trees. And then when all the pe people started pouring out of the building, they um, integrated with the, the crowds and escaped. So uh and then they they bulldozed the whole school to cover up all the evidence for you know the, the bullet holes and directions they went from. But um, anyway, so yeah, I've questioned a lot about that. But you know, I I do agree they shouldn't have treated Alex Jones the way he did. 
Um, on the other hand, you know, is he a deep state ad- asset? He makes you wonder because was B- AK Bill Hicks, you know, Precisely. But- thank you. Someone said it. Oh my goodness. Because of his scratchy voice, I've always suspected that um, he came just after Bill Hicks had um, passed and Bill Hicks used to talk about conspiracies and UFOs in his comedy. And he really, to me, looks like him. So um, I've always had that suspicion, James. All right, Gene, what, what's uh, decode your brain there? What do you think about Alex Jones and Sandy Hook? Um, I've seen a lot of information pointing that he's a probable Mossad agent. And it does seem that way. And the trial seems like a show trial, like a movie and not real. I mean, the way they jury selection, they ask the jurors, can you come with the verdict per person in Sandy, you know, family, 150 million per person. It's like, that's obviously anybody knows that's not how you do jury selection. And then to have pictures of his wife from his computers and all of that being you know and no discovery and no you know all of that i mean it's just utterly ridiculous it's the same thing we see with the mar-a-lago raid where the people involved or involved with epstein that are doing the uh you know signing for this and that and involved in this all of the stuff with january 6th and it's all interlaced and intertied what is the likelihood of that I would say it's obviously a show. It's the, you know, and what is really going on? I think we're watching a big, huge movie is what's really going on. So we'll see it all come tumbling out that they're, you know, the alliance is showing the world. And I know it looks, you know, you have, like you said, days, Matt, that are very depressing. Today was starting that way for me, a lot of it um, with what's going on in Ukraine. It's, Mm. You know, like the ambassador for Russia was saying at the UN, and you could see him choking up because all of the a lot of good men and women, they're sending women to the front too now and scripting women. So are losing their lives for what? For the deep state, Mm. for the freaking Kazarian mafia to control the world. That was the top hub for human child trafficking, weapons trafficking, uh, bio research facilities as they call them <laughs> newly <laughs> yeah right on the floor of congress it's, we have research facilities so in these research facilities do you take biological agents and you know increase their abilities yeah that's what we do well that's called gain of function dear <laughs> no stop playing tap dancing with the words and changing the meaning and changing how you de- define something be- and say that's not what we're doing when that is what you're doing and you know you can see that russian uh, ambassador choking up and i feel the same way as thousands of men are be- and women now are it's just being obliterated they're literally all over pieces of them and everything all over the grounds of ukraine they're just destroying them and you know and again anybody that's looking at that and saying, wow, they made so much advance. They're, they are now taking it home to Russia. And da, da, da. Um, they don't understand Sun Tzu's art of war at all. If your enemy, you're fighting an enemy, and they default in the middle of their battle line, and they retreat, and you follow them up right with them on all now three sides of you, they're on the right, they're on the left, and they're on in front of you retreating. You're heading into an ambush and a trap. You're being set up, and they're drawing you out. They essentially had in Ukraine what are like Nazis had in World War II, the marginal line. They had two huge lines of fortifications, and I've, you've seen many uh, what channels go into that. Um, so they drew them out of there. This is the majority of their primary fighting forces, over 15,000 men and some women up into this, miles and miles up in towards Russia even. So now they're close to Russia. I mean, you are close to where your enemy can launch on you. And they have long-range weapons and they have air superiority completely. And you're now out in the open. Oh, my goodness. So now, you know, people are saying, oh, they're sending some missiles. 
and I was explaining to you about remote viewing, how I did an interview the week before in February that everybody says they went in and I said, they're in there. They were in there the week before. And certain people say, well, I don't see the cyber activity and I don't see the aircraft. You, if you're doing a secret, secret operation, you don't squawk from your aircraft and you don't sit there and have all that cyber. You're silent and you're stealthy. You come in by train and rail and underground facilities and tunnel systems. That's how they got in there. And then it all the next week, everybody, oh, my gosh, Russia's in there. Same thing now with this offensive, this counteroffensive Ukraine. They're saying there's very little activity Russia's doing. When I remote view it, that's not what I see. What I see looks like it's hailing. It looks like snowing and hailing. There's so much artillery fire, so much air attack, uh, missiles, you name it, coming down. And there's just thousands and they're losing thousands of days. It is of uh, men and women a day. It is uh, just terrible. It's absolutely horrific. You know, it only is prolonging the inevitable because nothing has changed. Russia has technical superiority, armed superiority, and they have a, a massive manpower to draw on. And, you know, it's becoming incredibly, uh, first of all, they weren't taught, caught off guard because they're using patents, techniques that Patton used, where he does a series of uh, advising and, and steps. By, this was planned for at least two weeks in advance, this counteroffensive, if not two months, more likely two months. And the, to believe that Russia has no intel ability to figure this was coming, no way. You're moving troops, you're positioning armaments. They weren't taken by surprise at all. They're using it and they're setting this up and it's going to be catastrophic. It's going to be horrific, but it means that the majority of the defense forces are gone and then they'll sweep through Ukraine. But it's just lengthening, you know, like when they went to the peace tables in Turkey and then the UN got involved and NATO got involved and the EU got involved and said, you're not going to stop because that's the home of the Kazarian. That's what they wanted that to be, is they were forced out of that by the czar years ago and disseminated all over the earth. Like Cliff High said, the name changers. Mm -hmm. And they go all over the earth. They've infiltrated everything. Like Kennedy said, they go by infiltration and stealth. And that's what we're now dealing with, taking it down. But they realize the truth. They just never will admit to it. Like Klaus Schwab said, Ukraine is the ending of the end of the New World Order. That's exactly fact. And, you know, then there's other people putting out that people like James aren't telling the truth, like super soldiers on all this are saying, no, the, those that def defected from the dark fleet are now in cages in Australia, in Antarctica and all this and being food or being slave labor and there's nothing and they still have Mars colony and the ICC and the moon and all of this. Um, if that were true, let me clarify that. If that were true, then we wouldn't be seeing lines of earthquakes at 10 kilometers, literally tracking out the maglev lines. You would be seeing pandemic two you would have people in camps. You would see mandates and everything all over the world. They were going to do this. If you know their timeline, which I do, yep. they had already planned this to start before the end of the summer. And we're in the end of the summer. So it was supposed to start in the middle of the summer. That's where we'd be. You'd have a lot of people in the camps and all kinds of stuff going on. And they would have had drones that would have forced vaccinated people. Yep. Yeah, there would be no optional it would be mandatory now you'd be Especially. having phones and all the cameras and everything and 5g would be squawking with immense power and all that self-assembling nanotech it would be going freaking mad at people and they would they can upload them and then take them over all the people that are jabbed that, that technology is in those that are and that, so that's why that the pentagon be, the pentagon released reports about a zombie apocalypse because yes, they knew they were Yep, they're working. Let's see, yep. And that's why people are seeing it. And, you know, and the Z movie and all that is 
Tavistock Institute long range precondition. None of that's what's occurring. Therefore, you know you're not on that timeline and that's fear porn. Don't follow fear porn because it'll pull you to the line where that is true. Follow the truth and follow logic and common sense. I know James is telling the truth. How do I know? By the preponderance of evidence. Same thing when he's on super soldier talk and he's on there with Johan and all these other people and with Crystal on Fissing. Go by the preponderance of evidence and go by what you're seeing. Are you seeing what, if what they're saying is true, then you should be seeing X, Y, Z, but we're not. Therefore, that can't be true. It's just like in any court of law. Go by the preponderance of evidence. Don't buy into the fear. Don't feed the fear, but go by common sense and keep your faith in the supreme creator, the father God, and know that we are protected and that what is the truth? Well, they want you to feel fearful and they want you to be terrified, but we know the truth. Otherwise, with the power, if that were all still intact, they would have welded that power by now. They obviously are not because you wouldn't see like an emergency Bilderberger meeting where they took over a Holocaust meeting and they wound up getting in fist fights with each other. <laughs> like, oh, that's somebody at the end of, it's your fault this isn't going, oh, it's yours, pow, pow. <laughs> it's like, uh, like, you wouldn't be seeing that kind of stuff. <laughs> they yeah. probably wouldn't even know how to you hold a piece together. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be seeing that happening. So exactly. use your common sense and don't buy into the fear and stay, you know, I know days get hard. But, you know, stay and look around and enjoy the beauty of creation. And I look up in the sky and I've been looking up in the sky because I've been sun gazing. I was mm -hmm. telling James for over 30 years, I sun gaze for about an hour a day when I have the sun out in the time at noon. And I've been doing it for 30 years. It's made my eyes better than perfect. They were less than perfect before. And I used to wear glasses. I don't anymore have better than perfect vision. So I've been looking up in the sky and five, six, four, three years ago, it looked like a checkerboard up there. There's almost nothing anymore. Almost no trails at all. Periodically, two or three here. For the last decade, it was a checkerboard everywhere on earth. Yeah, there's some in some places. You're at war. You are back and forth in weather warfare. So I know the weather where I was born and lived and raised and grew up here where I moved back to. It's pretty much back to what it used to be when I was a child. That means it's natural. It's the natural. That's not weather warfare here. Yes, it is going in some places. You're at war. So sometimes there's chemtrails good and sometimes there's chemtrails bad, just like in the offensive in Ukraine. So you've got one side, then you got the other side, then you get it's back and forth and back and forth. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting you say that, Gene. I noticed since about September 3 that uh, the clouds are different. The way the nucleation's happening, cloud nucleation, um, they're fluffy again, like when I was a kid. And I haven't seen that in years. And um, I'm thinking, is this really something that has changed? I can't put my finger on it because all of a sudden things seem a bit different and feel different. Uh, I'm wondering if anyone else has had that same experience as well. Yeah, that's what I feel. And the difference is, is the alliance has got the, the upper hand big time. So don't buy Yeah, I agree with Gene. I think we're on a positive timeline. Yeah. There's so many negative predictions that have been coming out recently from remote viewers looking in the future and none of it happened. So I don't think any of that stuff's happening. I think, it, I think we're, we're going to see maybe some kind of Nasara event uh, where just everything's going to be just fine. Yeah. Thank you. And I also think that all of us have that equal responsibility um, having a uh, divine source within us to um, have intention of the timeline that we want. And if everyone collectively did that, I really believe that uh, things would move quicker and uh, the white hats or however you want to term it, galactics or our counterparts, I suppose, would probably even be accurate as well, higher self, um, can only meet us halfway. It's like we got to do this together. And um, that's something I've been really learning is when I go within and speak to God through that way and also activate my um, not only intuitiveness about what to do or what not to do, but also my intention setting. And I've noticed that my uh, outer world has become much brighter. And all of a sudden, things that were really scary 
are no longer in the way. It's really interesting. Um, so I kind of really feel that we have a lot more um, power than we've been told as far as who we are as humans. And um, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on that, um, Jean, as well as you, James. So Edgar Case was told if he could get just a couple hundred people together to meditate on peace, World War II would come to an end. It's a critical mass is all that's required. And it's people that are focused together make a critical mass. The quorum is much smaller if you're focused on a single vision. So that's why like Julie B's envisioning she does. Um, uh, usually on Saturdays, I do, I you know often present topics for that. We'll also be doing that on my channel. My website's up now, genedecode.org. Uh, we'll be doing it there as well. And I recommend people get together in groups because a singular focus is how they've been steering the timeline is get their focus put out and then to, for fear to back it up. So everybody focuses well, on genius. the let singular me, let focus. Me, I want to pick your brain on something. Uh, at Montauk, when they would travel into the future and every time they got to roughly around 2030 or so, it showed uh, nuclear devastation across the entire planet. And of course, they did try to tweak the timeline to chain things, but it, it all did just push the event back further in the future. So why is it, do you think that um, we are on a timeline where none of that has manifested, even though in the past, when they look in the future, they saw it happening? It's been pushed to 2045 is what I'm told with AC. But you got to realize that you, again, what the Montauk chair is steered by the person envisioning in it. So they put forth an idea or a premise or, you know, here's what we want. What timeline does that bring into being? Well, those people have a vibration and a frequency that are asking the question and putting forth and manipulating the timeline. So they're only going to go to the timelines they resonate with. They're not going to be able to go to a timeline in which if you're saying, OK, if God intervenes and the, there's an alliance in this and this, what happens? Well, that's not their focus. And then if you, you can only go to timelines in which you're on, if you're not on a timeline at all, you can't go there. If there's no future vibration in your frequency vibration, you don't have a frequency match at all. It's so positive. What ha occurs other than that? negative one they have of 2045 and they go and they wind up outside dia and lucifer's there and the whole world's destroyed by nuclear event and there's no life at all well that's because that's their frequency match but if you have people that are very positive and love god they go to a totally different set of timelines that because they don't have any vibration to that. They don't have any progeny there. They don't have any being there. They don't have anything of them there. They can't go there because it doesn't come from their timelines to there. That's not in their future. You, they can't go to where there's nothing, no future for them there. So you can only go to futures that can resonate with you that you could resonate with. So if you get into the Montauk chair and you go, okay, so Humanity comes to respect each other, love each other. All the free energy is released. Uh, patents, Nasara, Jasara. Yeah. Wow. What a difference we see now, don't we? <laughs> now we see something. Because not only that, you're coming to the, what is called the event. And so what is enabling them not to go, disabling them from going is the CME which separates, it's actually separated now. There's a 45D Earth in orbit behind. They've taken it pictures of it. They can't go there at all because, again, they don't resonate. It's, it just, just starts disintegrating them. So 4D, 5D Earth, positive. You can ascend negative to 5D, and you can ascend positive. Well, there are negative, so they get so positive there, they get, they, it would just disintegrate them to go there. So they, their timeline winds up on 3D, 4D, 5D negative, which is this Earth, and this Earth winds up 2045 decimated and barren. The positive. I, I hear it's closer to 20, in 2060. In 2045, Earth changes start happening. And then 2060, yep. uh, China invades. But um, yep. 
<laughs> so does that does that mean there's going to be two Earths where where so we can theoretically just resonate and go to this other Earth? It looks just like I, this one here, but more yep. positive. Yep, and it's it, just that, like uh, when you tesseract. Um, what you do is you frequency match where and when you want to be somewhere, and you'll if you can completely focus on it like in the movie somewhere in time he completely focused so powerfully he was there you let go of where you are and you focus utterly on where and when you want to be well you can do that but if it's an area that doesn't resonate with you at all you can't get there if it does you can get there so the positive lines that go you we can get there but they can't get there because they don't, it's just way beyond any energy resonance structure they possess so if they don't have divine source within them then they're not going to be able to tune into that radio frequency so to speak to match that um energy expression is that correct or correct precisely right if you've got no soul at all you can't go where it requires the soul to be there Aha. I think people in the, um, the audience will really appreciate that because I know there's been a lot of theories about different dates and um, I won't mention names of um, very wonderful people, but saying that on this date, this is going to happen. We're all going to disappear and end up in, um, you know, new earth and things like this. And there's a lot of people that are actually like really sad going, can my pets come with me? Oh, what happens? Does uh, that mean my partner, that person's had the jab? I haven't. Does that mean we're not going to be together? So uh, I'd love it if you could unpack a bit about that as well. Um, and uh, just to allow me to step out to get a glass of water. And um, I'd love to hear your answer on that one, if that's okay. And um, yeah, w what do you think about that, Gene? The, you want me to go first or James? Um, yeah, I'm happy for you to go first, knowing that um, you're already talking about this subject. As, and then James afterwards, that'd be fantastic while I step away for a minute. But I'll still be listening. Sure. Sure. So. Um... Again, it has to do with frequency matching. So it's what they call ultra vu. The past will actually change, and some people remember the change, and some people don't, because most people reload the new history. When they change their who they are now, you change to another timeline. If you change the way you make decisions and the resonance of it, you change who you are, you don't resonate with where you are. So you change to a timeline you do resonate with and the past changes to match because that timeline has a different past. And so that's what they call the Mandela effect. They now named it ultra vu. So for example, in my past originally, as I was talking to James earlier, it's not the Eldridge in the Philadelphia experiment. And it was not G Duncan Cameron and Al Bielik that got off the ship. It was Preston Nichols and Al Bielik that got off the ship. But it's still weird because on both timelines, and I'm aware of both of them now, on both timelines, the Montauk series is written by Preston Nichols and Peter Moon. Well, how would he know all the information and detail he does if he didn't get off the ship? <laughs> so I'm like, doesn't make sense to me, but okay, I'm willing to go there. But as you go to the positive and you uh, go through ascension to the positive, 3D, 4D, 5D positive earth, then those that resonate with you, and if a pet is in service to you and loving to you, it would wind up being there with you as well, because it has made a choice to be with you and be your pet. That choice is made, just like people, when they come into being, they choose where and when and everything of their birth and all of that is a choice and how you resonate. It's a choice. And so it's all about choice. So if you go and there's, you got to realize creation is infinite timelines. There's infinite lines. So you go to an earth where the person you're with doesn't resonate your, your, your primary significant other, for example, or your children. There are ones that do, they will change. And for you, for the average person, they won't notice the difference that their child may be, a, you know, like my neighbor next door had when we moved in, three children. Now she has one child and it's a daughter, but it's never the 
any of the two daughters my wife and I moved in with in the first place. <laughs> we met her in the park and like she goes, remember my daughter? And I go, yeah, I do. After we got done talking, walked away, my wife looked at me and goes, who was that? I go, yeah, tell me. I don't know. Well, that's a daughter apparently, but I've never seen her before because we're on a different timeline. And so she switched daughters out as far as she knows. That's always been her daughter. But it's now a different daughter because the one that didn't resonate with this line has changed to a different timeline and another one changed across. People don't realize or remember the difference or notice the difference. They don't notice even entire buildings will move and disappear or appear like in the mud flood stuff. We've got buildings from the mud flood here that it's not the past for this earth. It's a past that was truncated and moved into this earth timelines. And so there are a few people from there, kind of obvious because they're about seven or eight feet tall. <laughs> but, and then there's a, a lot of buildings. So, you know, it's understanding how things move. So in Ascension, again, people will move based on their resonant structure. And for the average person, you won't miss the fact that you have different children or you have no children. You won't even remember it at all. For me, I've had friends even back in seventh grade. One of my best friends disappeared and his house disappeared overnight and gone forever. And I remember the person quite well to this day. I remember them. I remember their home, but it's not there anymore. It's all gone. It was gone overnight. And no, my other best friend didn't even remember him. I go, where's so-and-so? He goes, who? I thought it was a practical joke because I'm in seventh grade. I'm you know, in seventh <laughs> grade. I'm not like thinking the way I do today. I'm like, you don't know who this is. He goes, no, I thought it was a practical joke until I finally went off the school bus and got out in front of his house, turned around. There's The bus pulls away and I go across and there's no house there. I'm like, what? I am really confused. <laughs> You know, it's like, but I figured it out now. So, yeah. So, but, Jay, but Gene, usually the memories are supposed to be wiped. So how come you, you were able to recall that, that because other time? I, because I am aware of myself on millions of timelines. That's why I, I'm getting a handle on it now, which one I'm talking to the people I'm with if I jump myself into a different me and a different slightly different resonance but we resonate or we're melding it's part of ascension as you meld uh, with many of you and so I'm in a five energy structure now <laughs> five me's here <laughs> and so as you get towards ascension you stop losing the memory and you start remembering the different ones a lot of people are experiencing it the Mandela effect so yeah. it's because you're ready to handle that. And I'm getting more of a handle on it. Like I did an interview a few years back where I said the White House is, you know, showing the Capitol building. And I was saying, here's, you know, they're coming out of the White House and people go, the White House is 17 blocks away. <laughs> I'm like, what? I went there. It was, it was a store. It was in a movie. It was this. <laughs> Not I remember anymore. it all being together with the dome building. Uh, next yeah. Year. Not anymore. They're 17 blocks. That's what people email me go, you're wrong. I'm like, no. And then I find out, no, it is that way here. So, okay. So it's different now. So I'm like, well, okay. So now I'm getting a handle. Okay. Here it's a four book series with the Montauk that is on this timeline, a three book series on that timeline, a five book series. And here the ship is called the Eldridge for the Philadelphia experiment. And over here, it's not it's this and over here it's this you know and it goes across you know i'm aware of timelines where the predominant species on earth human isn't based on a mammalian structure it could be silicon based or even methane based so i'm aware you know when i had my death experience part of why i think i have this is when i chose to come back on every timeline I chose to come back, I was aware of all of them. At that moment when I opened my eyes into my body, I was opening my eyes into all of the billions of lines that I had chose to come back simultaneously. And I had to get a hold on which one this soul part of me, of this, of my soul here, focus. So I was looking out my eyes and I 
then I realized I have to be breathing. So I turned my heart, my lungs and all that breathing. And I was looking out and I'm looking at my fiance at the time and I'm going, wow, it's really small. <laughs> well, oh, wait a minute, carbon-based. Oh, I'm flipping switches in my brain. Oh, human. And then I look at my arm. Oh, so am I <laughs> because I'm looking at you know, many, 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 many different when parallels of where some of them I'm methane based or plasma based or crystalline structured or, and so I was aware of all of them. And it's, you know, it's taken time to sort out all of the knowledge and all of the information and all of the parallels and which ones are the primaries and which ones are the lead me is on, which is me here now. And I've got to kind of semi lead me on the one where it's not the Eldridge and the Montauk series is, I think we're on the timeline where it's four books right now. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> the, there's two other major ones with three or five books in the Montauk series. So anyway, that's, I think, why to answer your question, James. Can I add a question to that as well? I think um, this might be relevant for James to jump in on as well. Um you know how since 2014 onwards, approximately, um, people that have been in, like, for example, super secret space programs or however you want to term it, hyperspace programs, have started getting their memories back from their uh, alternate um, parts of them that have uh, had that experience. And all of a sudden, it's kind of like the 100 monkey effect where people are suddenly getting this realization that, hang on, there's more to me than this. And certainly um, back then it would have been, and for me it was, very very confusing and um you know i'll put it to coma hallucinations um in terms of uh what happened with me when i woke up i'm going hang on what what's what's going on here um and i just thought oh, i was just hallucinating because i was on coma hospital drugs i was like ah i'll just put it in the you know back of the storing cabinet as that but um after hearing multiple people's testimony and witnessing the timeline change myself 2012 was one I noticed, as well as uh, a couple of times, I think, uh, since then, where um, the timeline has just suddenly shifted, where things are just slightly different. And, uh, yeah, I'd love you to jump in on this one, James. I think that kind of has to do with what Gene's saying as well about us getting more of our light body back into us and, um, and how we're going from there in terms of vibration increase. Uh, yeah, well, I... I think there is a timeline where we can uh, integrate with the most positive reality. Certainly that might actually be connected to this so-called so solar flash event. Um, I'm hoping maybe Gene could um, comment about that. But before you do, I wanted to ask a, another question for Gene about the Mandela effect. If you are in a timeline where there is, say, perhaps a zombie apocalypse or a nuclear war, does that mean that your soul gets rehomed into the positive timeline? So the memories of the negative timeline come over here. Is, is that what happens because of the multidimensional aspect of our souls? What do you think about that? So, so I guess theoretically, some people could remember nuclear war. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, I'll give you a, a personal example. Um, uh, I have been always aware in this lifetime from the moment I was born that they were going to nuke this world. So the first time they nuked it and they actually blew the planet to bits was 2008. And I was laying on my couch in my apartment and I saw the flash go off over the city and I sat up because you could see it through your eyelids and it woke me up and I'm like, here we go. And then I was like, laying on my couch again and i watched the planet blown to bits when my soul came out of my body you know get ready to go back to father god and i watched the planet disseminate into pieces and then i'm laying on my couch again i'm like i'm kind of confused <laughs> i just watched the planet blow to bits and god goes that's not your primary line that's just for personal experience to context things that will come later for you you've melded with another you now that you needs to be with this you that's here where that didn't happen I go, okay so then like you said in 2012 matt i experienced that and they blew the planet to bits again i'm like okay here we go <laughs> and the other me goes so you've been through this right and i go yeah we're just moving <laughs> so then the big one was 2016 Mm. And that one, they destroyed all life on Earth. And I watched the blast go off. And in uh, 2012, I told my wife, I said, you know, I knew 
that was the one all of the Mies knew. So uh, that life on Earth would end and they'd irradiate the entire planet. It wouldn't be blown to bits. Is that, there, is that the timeline where Hillary Clinton got elected? Yep. Yep. So in 2012, I told my wife, let's try. Travel the world, buy a really nice house, a Jeep, have a great time, just just like do everything we ever wanted to do. She goes, how do we afford that? I go, what? let the credit roll. <laughs> let's take out loads. Let's do it. So I was in our big, nice house and I watched the city go kaboom in 2016 after Hillary won. And I go, that's it. And then I sat up in the couch again <laughs> in my apartment. I'm like. Now I'm really confused because now we're back in time. And God goes, well, they never showed that they were going to destroy all life on earth. They have to show it. It's a requirement in God's law that they show. That's why Tavistock has long range preconditioning. And they tell you or show you in the cartoon, a comic book, anything. They have to show you somewhere. And they never did that. I mean, they had the Jericho series where they had some destruction or major part of destruction. So the zombie apocalypse, they got to show you that if they're going to create that. So they do that. And so he goes, because they didn't, I reset it. I'm like, ow. So then 2012 came, you know, from 2008 again to 2012. And I told my wife, we should buy a nice house that we can afford. (laughs) Not this time go crazy, right? (laughs) Because I'm like... Uh, I don't think we're on that timeline anymore. And let's get a nice used Jeep. <laughs> you know? So get a deal on one, you know? <laughs> so no we one good... <laughs> yeah, so a little more reserved, right? And so now things are different. And so it's rolling and things are changing. And you know, I'm watching things happen that I never, ever thought from, you know, watching the world irradiated and seeing the cabal actually being compromised and, you know, all kinds of things. I never, ever thought that that would ever happen. Can I um, jump in with a quick explanation of an experience I had last year? Um, that's very similar to that. Is that okay, gents? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I actually had experience where I um, kept on having this repetitive nightmare about, um, the, a sky event where the sky went red and the wave was coming and then all of a sudden, it, you know, kaboom. And um, I had this experience, so I was talking about it with my uh, Reiki healer and um, all of a sudden I was actually experiencing it and the full emotions of it and then me calling up into a ball howling and uh, sitting on the couch howling like, crunched over and it felt so real and then all of a sudden after um the wave came bang i was just like in total peace and then after that i um met my galactic team and uh, it was the most incredible experience i've ever had and she was watching it too she could see the energies and she was just in awe of like the, the beauty of um, these wonderful divine masters that were just um, shrouding me and her in that moment. And that was just the most incredible thing ever. And after that, the next day onwards, all of a sudden the timeline was different where truth bits were starting to drop. And I just noticed that everything was totally different. And uh, I just wanted to add that in there because that really is a, a very, very close experience I've had. And I was wondering whether that was a timeline jump or was that something that was shown to me, do you think, to kind of uh, give me the awareness as to how I can vibrate at the best frequency? What do you think about that one? I'll get Gene. Well, I, I think you had a timeline jump. What about you, Gene? Yeah, that's a timeline jump. Yeah. What an experience. I could personally test to that. And um, I understand where, where you're coming from. Uh, the first time we chatted, Gene, I hadn't had that experience. But my goodness, that was um, a very profound. And I think we had a Gene, timeline jump on the third as well a few days ago. Gene, I, I remember uh, Tank Boy being run over uh, in, Tian- in Tiananmen Square. Uh, do you have any idea what happened to that timeline? <laughs> I was shocked to see that it, he didn't get run over. There was no blood on I mean. By the tank. Yeah, that one 
China went and took over the world. Okay, I, yeah. Well, I'm glad to be over here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. I remember it too, him being run over, and then they showed him out in front. I'm like, um, not how I remember that happening, but thank goodness it's not that because I don't like the where that would go. As I could see that was headed to, you know, not a good thing. Matt, that, do you remember Tank? Do you or are you old enough to remember Tank Boy? Me. Yeah, yeah being I run do. over. Uh, he didn't get run over though. Um, I remember yeah. when I was about uh, probably five or something. It was what eighty eight? I think this was. Um, I was only really young. I, I do remember it, but uh, he was a hero because he was a one man standing up against the tank at Tiananmen Square. Uh, I've even talked about that as examples of showing strength and um, previous interviews and things like that. So I know for a long time it's been the same um, timeline that I had that memory of for sure. No one got ran over. I, rem I remember the uh, news reporters just being absolutely shocked to see the blood and they were like, just like, um, just furious at the uh, CCP regime. And then, yeah, like I said, I, all that stuff never happened here. So anyway, but yeah, it's just like uh, a lot of people remember um, Nelson Mandela dying in prison. Uh, well, I've always remembered um, him being freed, for example, but other people like Johan I've interviewed has a totally different memory of that. It's fascinating. What about the solar flash? Uh, Matt, do you have information or Gene about what the solar flash, if, if that's even real, allegedly in 2030? When this is going to take. Do I heard, but that uh, could be just kind of. Currently what, is currently, what I have is 2031. Okay. It's a function of, it happens every 125 million years. It's a function of the Milky Way itself. As we go around, our solar system goes around and orbits the Milky Way. It takes 250 million years. There's many bit different cyclic periods. It's the correct one is 250. So every half cycle, you pass through what's called the, the, the cabal calls it the Masonic ring. Um, it's okay. a photon bell. I call it for what it is, a photon bell. So we go through that. And they actually launched Voyager 1 to prove it wasn't there because if it is there, they realized it's going to cause the energy on Earth to jump massively. So part of their getting in front of that, they did lose contact with Voyager 1. So they proved it is there. And they've actually now sent ships in the secret space programs through it as well and said, yeah, it's definitely there. And the good people got really good and the bad people got really bad. And so it's a separation of dark and light. It's the separating of the wheat from the chaff. And it happens every 125 million years. The last one was from 2D to 3D. This one's from 3D to 5D, 4D and 5D. So those that are going positive will go to positive and go to that earth. Those that are going to negative will stay here, <laughs> like we've already spoken. And so the effects of that are already being felt because it's not a hard wall. It just the three days you pass through it where it causes the sun's corona to collapse to the core because it's a dampening field. You have this huge infrared curtain because the cent central sun of the Milky Way is an infrared giant, but it's caught like all falling galaxies inside a black hole. And so the energy comes out of black holes at the poles and it literally goes out often hundreds of millions of light years. And in the case of the Milky Way, that energy doesn't go out three dimensional because you've got Andromeda on one side, it's a massive galaxy, and you've got Sagittarius and the globular clusters on the other side. So the gravitational push from Andromeda and from Sagittarius pushes that energy field. So it's almost like 2D is a ring that all of the solar systems pass through every half rotation. And so as you go in, that huge energy causes the, the, the energy of that sun, which is the energy for suns. If you research the electric universe, there's a whole bunch of scientists that talk about this, does not come from inside. It comes down ley lines, what are called Birkeland currents. You can see them in space, these huge tubes of energy that are on a ley line kind of lattice on a, a, like a grid system. And so when you have a whole bunch of those lines come together, you have masses form out there. And then the solar system forms, you get a sun and with planets radiating outwards. And so the energy for the sun 
and it's pretty easy to to see it logically that it is not coming from inside because if you look at the surface of the sun it's uh, i believe about one million degrees kelvin but if you go a hundred million miles out in space it's 12 million degrees kelvin how can it be hotter further away from the source because the energy isn't coming from the inside, it's radiating down these ley lines. And as it gets closer, it's getting denser. And so it starts to jump frequency and to get as it's getting denser in density. And as it gets to the surface of that accrued mass, it ignites in what is the light spectrum that we see for our sun based on its resonant frequency and its uh, mass volume relationship, energy mass volume relationship. So when you go into an, a compression field like that in the, mace, in the photon belt, it causes that energy to collapse into the core. Well, when you hold an energy inside the crystalline structure of the center of the sun, it's going to start to vibrate hard and it'll start jumping octaves. So it's going to jump from 3D to 4D to 5D, and then you come out of the field and burst outwards. So you'll see suddenly the corona of the sun jump back, and then it has so much power, it literally full coronal mass emission. So you can see, you know, that's why all of the planets, not just Earth, are having dramatic climate changes. So Mars doesn't really much have ice fields on the poles anymore. It's melted off. And then there, they, there's a storm on Mars that's about the size of Texas that's been there for a decade now. All of the planets are getting much more energetic because you're getting this energy coming in from that belt of energy that's going down the ley lines and, and up in the energy of our sun. We don't cause global warming. Where's the warmth of the Earth come from? this ball of energy in space called the sun. <laughs> you know? And if you believe in greenhouse gases, you need to go back to biological chemistry and then study chemistry and life and how life works. Yep. You, know, you put oh, carbon see. dioxide and hydrocarbons in the air, plants get big <laughs> and you that's get more energy. Point. They get what? big and they pull heat out of the air and you get global cooling, not warming and global temperature unification. You don't get these huge different zones like we have now. That's what there were, and that's a lot of manipulation. And then the, all this carbon signature garbage is nothing but that. It's utter garbage. And, you know, the same thing they say with fossil fuel. We're going to run out. You can't run out. <laughs> it's not possible. It goes into the aquifers. It rains down as the rain goes in the aquifers, flows to the continental shelf, fills up big, huge caverns because the ocean floors are all volcanic rock, all of them. And so it doesn't go the oil, into the oil. Oil is like the lifeblood of the planet. It's uh, the oil yeah. of Mother Earth, Gaia. Yeah, that's, and, it, yeah. and I think it's, that's actually it's, called it's abiotic wild. oil theory. Yes. I've yes. Heard of that. Yeah. Precisely, James. Precisely. So, anyway, that's my two cents. <laughs> I had a quick question on um uh, on an Earth related matter with the um uh, ley lines, for example. Um, you know, Uluru as rock was that um uh, an example of a ley line that crosses over Gene, um, in a similar way that um each sun would be a ley line point on each planet. Just uh just for people to sort of clarify, is that kind of um, what happens here as well? Is that why there's an uh, obelisk built on certain points as well is that try and take over the energy? Yeah, so you've got ley lines in space, and then each object in space, a sun, a planet, will have ley lines of energy structure just like you do. And I'll be going into this when I do this, the sacred nature of seven on deep dives is you have ley lines in your body. They're called acupuncture meridians and channels. And those are actually now discovered to have been, like I've been saying for decades, they're fiber optics in your body. You have, th we are built in the image of God and God is tri triune in nature. So, so are we. We have three circulatory systems, not, not two. You got your cardiovascular, you know, arteries, veins, capillaries, and the heart system you've got the lymphatic system that requires muscles to pump the lymphatic fluid back to the venous cava and the big huge you know artery in the in the middle of the body in the core of the body 
And then you've got the acupuncture and meridians channel system. And it's literally fiber optics, Koreans, a Korean group, and also a Soviet group, and also a Japanese group have now actually photographed it. It's been photographed back during the Soviet Union. They've actually seen the fiber optics. And then you have little balls or computers of balls of the fiber optics that coordinate each of the organs in those in its area. And there's a layer of seven of those main primary computer systems with you know, mini servers, like in the palm of your hand and in the ball base of your foot and, you know, in your ear and in your eye. But you've got seven major ones, which are called the chakras, because the energy spins in there. Chakra just is a Hindu word meaning spinning wheel. It looks like a wheel spinning. And it's just a fiber. Yeah, just spinning. And so they are frequency oriented based on the frequency at that level of the body, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. It's very simple. And so those chakra systems are part of the ley lines and those ley lines are actually little fiber optics that are carrying a fluid that's glowing in ultraviolet. It literally is an ultraviolet light pathway. And so ley lines on earth, ley lines on us. And so on earth, the ley lines go, you've got two different ways they work. First, you've got what looks like a bar magnet between the poles. So from the North Pole, which is the Antarctica, to the South Pole, which is the Arctic, you have a ley line that's or a magnetic line of flux. And gauss are only, you don't have 0.6 gauss. You, have, you can't break that line. It's impermeable. It cannot be broken. And then you have coming out of the equator because of the Merkabic field, you have an energy structure that comes out and that's what both negative and positive lines come out and then they opposites attract they break apart and go towards the equator so you have a moving ley line going across the static ley line and so that's why in world war ii for example hiroshima and nakasaki were done on different days if you're going to attack a samurai you don't sit there and come in one day and come back the, <laughs> later you just keep going you can't just have unlimited thermonuclear war on Earth and obliterate everything in hours. You, for a nuclear bomb to detonate, it has to be on a ley line, and it requires, again, the triune nature of creation. You have to have supercritical mass at the crosshairs of that moving line and the static line. If you're not on a static line, you won't get a blast, you'll get a nuclear yield like Fukushima here, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl. The, they purposely build reactors, hmm. not on ley lines. So if you have a mess, you have a supercritical mass that goes absolutely out of control. It doesn't blow up. It doesn't go kaboom. It goes bush, <laughs> bush. <laughs> you know? And so the reason they had to hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki is because at different times is because you have to hit that moving line within one second degree of arc and one second in time, and then have the supercritical mass there at that time. And so, again, the additionally, the Japanese were only 16 days away from being able to detonate their own devices. And so they had to move quickly. And if you look at Japan from east to west, because the static lines are where you can develop, and they go from, you know, there's more lines east to west in the U.S. than there is in Japan. Japan has only a couple lines going through it, and that's why they didn't detonate on Tokyo. If you're going to make a point with a samurai, you either hit a military target or you hit the biggest population center. You don't hit something that's not seem to be relevant. So... The problem with the U.S. is the most of your major cities are on ley lines, like Phoenix and New York and Chicago and Denver and L.A. And so you have a lot of targets and you've got a lot that you can hit simultaneously. So, you know, that's how nuclear physics and all of the triune nature and that's on ley lines. So you understand a little better. Hope that clarified. Wonderful explanation. Thank you so much for that, Gene. And I really loved um, the bonus extra about something I wondered all my life. Why would they have bombed in Japan like that? Um, so thank you. I, I mean, I'm not happy it happened, obviously, but um, it certainly has helped me to understand uh, a little bit more about 
the physics behind it as well as uh, why that was done because I've always found that really strange just to be honest uh, in terms of you know our history what we learned and it's like this doesn't add up but now it makes absolute sense so with that um, I guess something that just popped in my head there's been some people that have been a bit worried about this um, nuclear preparation ad that's been um, on New York television um, is that because you've heard of possibly a false flag attack there um, Fair point. yeah I felt that too but wanted to ask you um, so on here I've got in, I've got information about that the uh, yeah. false flag NYC um, had somebody remote view it November 23rd 2024 it happens two blocks away from Trump Tower but it's on another timeline it's not going to happen on this timeline but in that timeline they pretty much it pretty much devastated New York City for uh, a couple decades so yeah okay. that's a little hint there and uh, I think and it's Al Qaeda who, who who performed involved in that yeah same as they were going to do that in Seattle last a couple of years back they had a event a schedule of nuclear event scheduled for Seattle but the alliance stopped it James but, probably knew of that one I think but, I mean, oh I believe one, yeah go, go ahead, ahead. Uh, what about 2018 when um, North Korea allegedly had a nuclear missile heading towards Honolulu? And um, I remember at the time it was on the news and they tried to blame it on a new operator that uh, pressed the wrong button and it wasn't actually uh, a, a, a missile incoming. Um, but a lot of people were really freaked out because it wasn't a, a test on their phone. It was an actual emergency alert to say, take cover. Uh, is that um, something that the Alliance um, thwarted, gents? Yeah, that's what I heard, uh, Gene. Do you have any more specifics yeah. on that, that particular event? Nothing I can go into. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it has to do with ongoing oh. things. I can't go into well, it. Could, could you comment about uh, Ayers Rock um, since... I know Matt, you were you were asking about it, but is that an anti uh, antediluvian tree like uh, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming, supposedly fifty thousand years ago, a tree about two yeah, to three miles high? Yeah, I wanted to comment on all of your things you put in the chat, James. A lot of great ones. Yes, that and if you go down into South America and all of the big, huge, uh, mile high um, things in the Amazon, those are tree stumps as well. And there's quite a few of them all over the world. There's a total of about 200 of the massive trees that the Nephilim cut down. It's in the Bible of 200 that cut down trees. So that is 200 total. Um, another bunch are in Chile. Because sometimes you just see like if you break a tree or it rots and it falls over or something like that, or it's pushed over, it breaks and it's jaggedy. And the ones down in Chile are jaggedy looking. So there's those all over the world. And so I'm glad you went. And then on the Queen's death, um, I wanted to cover that too, if you're done asking about that. So well, the Queen. Uh, I'm, I'm, wait, hold on. Hold on. Uh, as far as the actual, the event of them, the cutting down the trees, was that like, um, was it when we went from fifth dimension down to third dimension, there's some kind of war and they cut it down. Is that what lowered the, the dimensional threshold by cutting those trees down? Yes. Okay, and is that why they turned into rock? They fossilized when they went from 5D to 3D? Yes. Um, there was a similar event like the mud flood, uh, again, back at that time. And so if you bury something in mud while you're having an electric war, it was the what was known as the electric wars. Um, there's a group called Celestial Navigation, and the guy actually talks about the electric wars and being part of it uh, in that. It's kind of a sounds like fiction and a storybook kind of thing. But if you expose something buried into mud with electricity, it'll fossilize literally within an hour or two. It does sometimes even if there's enough electricity, it'll fossilize in minutes. You could fall into a mud pit and literally be fossilized in minutes if there's enough electrical arcing into that mud, whether it's lightning or electric cannon, rail cannons, whatever. It's like the lightning okay. strikes and sand. You can um, actually get these really beautiful artworks that people collect where the um, sand literally turns to stone. Is that kind of what you mean, Gene? Yeah, what happens is if you expose it to electricity, the organic 
will pull in the, the minerals into the body and um, whether it's a tree or a person or a, a mastodon and it'll fossilize them very quickly. And that's why you look at Devil's Tower, also Devil's Post Pile out in California is another one. And there's many of those where you see these hexagonal kind of tube shapes like Devil's Tower. Well, if you look at a tree in a microscope, that's exactly what you see for the tubes that run water from the soil all the way up to the top of the tree. They're hexagonal shaped tubes that bring the water up through a capillary action. My mind is absolutely blown. Um, so it's putting together a lot of pieces about how we had uh, much, much more oxygen millions of years ago, why the animals are so big, the dinosaurs in that era. Just only makes sense. Uh um, so yeah, anyway, um, I think that's absolutely amazing and it certainly makes, uh, Jack and the Beanstalk and things like that seem, uh, not just fairy tales anymore. And certainly I'm finding out so much more that what we thought was fiction is actually fact. So thank you so much for unpacking that. Yeah. So the, what is actually occurring is the earth is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and increasing mass by two mechanisms. And I went into this on my uh, deep dives channel already in the expanding and hollow earth part one's the expanding earth and the first is every day hundreds of tons of debris fall from space on earth additionally plants actually create the majority of what they are from cold fusion and a guy actually got a noble a japanese gentleman won a Nobel prize by proving that plants do this by creating a sealed system and growing a plant from a seed and then breaking it down beforehand into you know, the amount of moles of every one of the organic elements like carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen, et cetera. And then when the plant was at full growth, he broke it down again and showed hundreds and hundreds of percent of increase. And it was in a sealed system. So they do what's called cold fusion or low energy nuclear reactions where they transmute elements by absorbing photons and adding it and literally taking, for example, hydrogen, like in cold fusion or low energy nuclear and making helium, and they can make carbon and they can make oxygen, they can make nitrogen. And so the majority of what they, the mass on earth that we see, that's why if you go to a redwood forest that they harvest every, you know, 50, 100 years, if that tree was made from the soil below it, there should be a crater. <laughs> because that's a massive, I mean, hundreds of tons of wood. I mean, it's a massive thing. And yet you see the ground getting higher and higher and higher. Every It's dropping pine needles and boughs and branches and bark and as it's growing. And so it's getting bigger and the floor of the, is getting higher and higher and higher. And so that's why when, archaeological digs are digs they're not like the staying on the ground they're buried 50 100 200 the further you go back the deeper you go like in the grand canyon you go mile down and they're layer after layer after layer of debris and so the earth is actually gaining mass which means it's gaining gravitational wealth the well of the gravitational force that the earth creates a gravitational well is growing so if you go back 200 million years ago, the gravitation was almost half of what it is today. So you can have a brachiosaurus walking around with its head 90 feet up. Right. The scientists are telling now, because they can't figure out how it could get blood to a head 90 feet off the ground, they said it had to be up to its neck in a swamp. Uh, no, because look at its foot. Its foot's flat. Animals and swamps have web feet, and they're not big flat feet. Things that are mostly on the ground and big, like elephants, rhinoceros, have flat feet, big flat feet. And then if you look at the weight of that brachiosaurus, there is no bone on earth that cannot be pulverized with that weight to dust. It can't live on the surface of the earth. And even if it was up to its neck in a swamp, the heart would have to be the size of the entire body to get blood to its head. And you look at a pteranodon with a wingspan that is so massive. 
it could not fly today. And there's, I showed a, a picture of a lady that has in her hand a dragonfly with a 14 inch wingspan that existed back 200 some million years ago. Um, that if it flapped its wing would be shredded in today's atmosphere because the air is denser because the gravity is higher. So the air was thinner in actuality because the earth was much, much smaller. And it actually, if you take it back over 300 million years ago, there were no oceans at all. There were fresh seas that were like S-shaped over the surface of the so solid cut, one solid piece inside and out. And what happened is it, it eroded, it got weak because of all that sand and water, you know, going under the, the fresh seas, it pushes pressure and it pushes the rock down and, and it gets eroded by the, the liquid rock underneath the mantle. And so it becomes weak. And when that cracked all the way, went all the way around, then it starts to open up. And it opened up very quickly and very rapidly in a singular event that caused a war the first worldwide flood. And it's the great, the third great extinction happened because of it. And so the entire continents moved to within 40 miles of where they are today in 40 days. It rained like crazy. And the earth used to be super saturated. The atmosphere was super saturated. That's why you hear in the Bible, it says that it didn't rain. There weren't rainbows. Because there were, it just, it, as it would cool at night, it would just do. And if you're high, you get ice forming on things. But once that cataclysmic event happened, everything now can open up. And that's why if you look at core samples from the bottom of the ocean, there's nowhere on any ocean floor, you'll find rock over 300 million years old. Nowhere. The oldest rock you can find is near where Thule was, which was the capital of Lemuria, which is near the coast of Asia. There's an area there that's about 300 and some million years old, a little bit less. Everything else is around 250 million years old or even younger than that. And not only that, all of the ocean floors are volcanic rock. There's no sedimentary rock. There's no igneous rock. That's telling you that there are no oceans 300 million years ago. The continents, it's not obvious if you look at the Pacific Basin, how it fits. But if you move Antarctica and, Aust and Australia up and you close it up, it fits perfectly the west coast of the Americas into Asia with Antarctica and the major part of Antarctica, which was Lemuria and Australia. And then the other part of Antarctica goes up, which was Atlantis, up into the missing chunk where you fit the east coast of the Americas into Africa and Europe. But there's a small chunk missing, and that was Atlantis. And that's the other part of Antarctica today. And so the Earth gravity well is now much higher. So you had a much smaller earth and it was much warmer overall, but it did not rain. And that's the firmament. You had a super saturated solution, which was the atmosphere. Is if I take any medium like a glass of water and I heat it till it's boiling and I stir salt in it till, you know, it can't go anymore as it's cooling down. Then I raise it back to boiling, it'll go back into saturation. So now I just let it cool down slowly and not jar it. Don't bump it. It'll go back to room temperature and hold the salt that's in solution more than you could have in solution at room temperature. It's called a super saturated solution. Now all I have to do is drop one grain of salt into that and you'll get a cascade of it where all that salt that's beyond what should be in there at room temperature will cascade out and you'll see salt crystals growing on the side of the glass. We did this in, in chemistry class. We actually took a pencil with a little thread on it with a little bolt on the end and held it in there and dropped a salt crystal and you watch these beautiful salt crystals growing on the thread and the bolt. Well, in the case of the earth with a super saturated solution, when they broke the crust apart underneath the earth's crust, of course, are huge aquifers. And 
those aquifers, which are where the oceans are now, shot up into the atmosphere, which is super saturated, causing a cascade event. Because now you're sending a water into a super saturated water solution of air and water. So it rained like crazy for 40 days in all the continents, because now the torque of the earth as it's spinning and the centripetal force can act on it and pull them apart. They all moved apart from each other. You don't have one going faster, like India zooms halfway around the world, <laughs> and then the Americas don't move at all. And you know, you've got two continents not moving at all. The only way you can have a continent not moving at all is it's fixed to the mantle below. But that would mean just one. You can't have two. So it means that everything's moving apart. And then everything has to move at the same rate. And they've actually measured the spreading now by satellite. It was a joint project with NASA and John Hopkins and a few others. They measured, and it's about 0.2 centimeters per year that the Earth is increasing its size, its radius. So, you know, again, also, if they, you believe the Earth has stayed the same and the continents are moving around on it, you would have for the amount of material that's being added to the ocean floors, that's massive for the Pacific. You would have to have massive subduction zones. And that violates the laws of physics, number one. You're sending a more dense thing into a less dense thing. It'll bob to the surface like a ball. It won't do that. But also, you have to have as much subduction zone as you have zones where new land's being created. That means the entire mid-Pacific Ridge, mid-Atlantic Ridge, mid-Indian Ocean Ridge, you have to have that many trenches and subduction zones. You're thousands of miles short. So it can't be remaining the same size. And you've got whole areas where there's no subduction zone at all. Additionally, if you have continent going, you know, the ocean floor is going underneath the continent, you'd be piling up debris on the edge of the continent. You don't see that on the edge of every continent. You would have massive mountain ranges. Just push your hand across the back, your fingers across the back of your hand or your arm, and you'll see skin pile up, especially as you get old. <laughs> My skin piles really up old. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, this is part of the fiction that they want to you not realize the history and the antiquity and all kinds of things that they've been doing stuff for not thousands of years, not millions of years, billions of years. They've been subjecting this planet to torture for billions of years. They've been causing galactic calamities for billions of years. They've broken the entire planet 200 and some million years ago. So... It now is moving. Is apart. that when Tia, Tiamat uh, fell apart 250 or is that even before that? That's, that's before the earth at that time, Tiamat or Maldek was a moon of Tiamat or Maldek. It was called King. And so that's about, I believe if I have my time frame right, about 500 million years ago. And then the earth was displaced during that destruction as Kingu and came to rest in the orbit it is now. And then a little while later, Venus, which, which was a moon as well, actually went by the Earth and went to the orbit it's in. And when it passed, it cut the Grand Canyon. And it, the first, if you have two objects, just like you rub your feet on a carpet, you go to reach for the doorknob, you get an electric arc. Shot. It's equalizing the differences and potentials. Once you get close enough to where the resistance of the medium can't you know, keep the equalization of the potentials, then you'll have an arc. So the first arc hit at side Flagstaff. It's that crater. The guy that bought it tried to want to get the iron in the, in the middle from the meteor that hit. And there is no meteor. There was no iron. Not only that, normally if a meteor hits, the material that it ejects inverts itself as it goes up onto the sides of the crater. So the older stuff is on the bottom and the newer stuff's on, um, excuse me, the older stuff's on the top and the newer stuff's on the bottom. In the case of that crater, the newer stuff's on the top because if you have an electric arc, it's spraying the material out. It's not flipping it out. And so then you look at the Grand Canyon from space, it looks like an electric arc has hit the earth. And it did because if it's erosion that caused that, that's a massive amount of material. It, where did it go? You look at 
mm. the Nile and you look at the Danube and you look at the Amazon and you look at the Missouri and you look at the, all of the big rivers when they open out into oceans, there's a huge delta of debris being deposited. You look at where the Grand Canyon emptied out before they dammed it up, there's nothing. The whales come up in there to scrape the barnacles off because it's solid volcanic rock again. Where'd all the debris go? Vaporized. Oof. So a lot of Earth's history, again, you know, the destruction of Maldek and Tiamat, that was a, another war of the, the pre-Adamites, uh, as well as the Jovians and different groups, one on Mars, one on Jupiter, one on Saturn. They got in a big altercation with the Maldekians and they blew the planet to pieces. Unbelievable. Just a quick question um, on um, what you're saying earlier, because I think this really will relate um, to, I guess, the ethos of how the dark um, entities on our planet think. By cutting down all our trees and making us take the blame, saying, oh, climate change because you, uh, you know, uh, there's too many of you, blah, blah, blah. Um, are they essentially trying to cut down trees to stop the earth from going through the vibration increase? From what you're saying before about how trees do that transmutation, cold fusion? Well, you got to remember the earth is a living being, mm. just like you. So you breathe, like James had said, you have a circulatory system. In the case of the earth, it's the oil. You have a lymphatic system on the case of the earth, that's the aquifers. Mm -hmm. And you have pumps and you have things to clean the atmosphere. In your lungs, you have cilia and hair when you breathe in. If you look at your throat and your esophagus, for example, normally, unless you're a smoker, those are collimated uh, and ciliated. In other words, they have hair and they look like a column again. And then if you smoke, the hairs break off. And that's what makes you cough is the hair when it gets something in it. Well, the hairs break off and then the cell goes into a squamous cell. It looks like a fried egg. And so you destroy it. And so to that keeps and cleans the lungs out and the debris that makes you cough up phlegm and stuff because the, the cilia are vibrating when stuff gets in there. And it says, get that out of here, cough that out. And it helps clean too. It'll actually help clean it out. And the cells will absorb in with the lymphatic system and remove all that. Well, if you stop that from happening for the earth, the trees are the earth's lungs. Mm -hmm. So they breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen, which the animals and the insects and all that need. They take in hydrocarbons and combine them with sunlight and manufacture more. So they create the material that the plants and animals need to eat. If you start cutting all that down, what are you doing? You're interrupting the ecosystem. You're destroying it because the cabal is a death cult. They are AI'd beyond comprehension at the top. You're talking Draco and all those guys. They're AI. They're, they are full of it. And so they are a death cult and they despise organic life. So how do you stop organic life? You interrupt the life cycle. You cut the trees down on earth. Wow. Okay. But that's just um, puts a lot of millions of years worth of um, people's research, I guess, all in one package to make total sense as a lot of people just believe what they've learned. And um, certainly when I was a kid, I questioned everything, but I kind of just accepted what I was told up until a point as we all did, I suppose, on one level or another, but um, this is incredible information. Um, even though some people might not be fascinated in geology, geography, and certainly, um, you know, biology as well. But wow, thank you, Gene, for unpacking that because I think it's actually a very important piece of the puzzle as people awaken as well. Because, um, you know, when you look at the actual facts through the lens of what you've just said, uh, I really think it's going to make a lot of sense to people, even learned people. So, uh, that, that's absolutely wonderful. Is there anything else you wanted to add on this subject? Yeah, I want to go to through it and, and comment on all of uh, James' amazing chat comments. So he talked about first, we, we didn't go into the Queen, which is Operation London Bridge. The 
the queen is at about 20 years old, taken over by a fifth density negative Draco that's been jumping from queen to queen to queen and then sometimes a king. So if you look at Victoria's Secret, um, the secret is that was a king. <laughs> <laughs> that was a man. That was not a woman. <laughs> so this creature has been jumping and jumping and jumping. Operation Linden Bridge was to intercept and freeze that critter before it could jump to the next generation, and which was accomplished. So uh, the witch is dead. <laughs> Ding dong, the Ding witch dong. is dead. <laughs> Here, this is um, this is a Ooh. prediction from uh, Notre Dame. It basically says abdication of Charles III says uh, Queen Elizabeth will die at the age of 96 and a half years. Then Prince Charles will be crowned in her steed and become king of the islands. Uh, implication is that he is no longer king of the other region. Um, so then it says here, Prince Charles will be 74 years old in 2020. It looks like 22. can't really see that. When he takes over the throne, but the resentments held against him by a certain proportion of the British population following his divorce from D Diana, Princess of Wales, I can't read that right there. It says the pressure on him is so great and his age so much against him that Charles agrees to abdicate in favor of his son. The question is which son for the last Nostradamus reading, I guess it says here very clear, a man will replace him who would never expected to be king. So does this mean Prince William um, who never expected to succeed his father or someone else, Prince Harry or uh, someone, yeah, King Henry the, the ninth age, just 38. What, what do you think of this, uh, Gene? Uh, pretty accurate and uh of course he, she's been gone for a while it wasn't this year but from what i've been told 2018 so they have to make it this year to fulfill nostradamus um because nostradamus is cabal so you can control the narrative by controlling the events so that's what they've been doing and so here's another yeah here's another one it shows the uh the the flag is wrinkled <laughs> Yeah, so I guess that means she's a traitor. And then yes, the license right. plate, the license plate is WP4597, witness protection, Trump 45, uh, 97 is a year, Diana died. So maybe maybe that means both of them are in witness protection. Yes. Does that mean Diana's, Diana is still alive? Yes. Huh. Do you think that's, th this is, this is, um, that this was intentional these numbers or you think that was just a coincidence no intentional hmm. okay okay so now to your next wonderful <laughs> yeah comment. um what do you want to share about Zelensky? he's it's an actor oh yeah in there. oh yeah yeah um uh, i'm gonna hold on i have it an actor and a comedian in a job that he doesn't know how to do, being told what to do, just a mouthpiece. Yeah. I don't so, understand how the whole world still buys what the MSM's talking about and think he's a great leader. Um, unbelievable. Yeah. So this is a uh, Russian psychic Baba Vanga who announced Zelensky's fate. So this guy predicted this around, I think it was March of 22. Um so this is a psychic that uh, apparently is very accurate. And um, I mean, I'm not going to go through all this, but uh, he warned in, 90, in, 18, in 1988, he warned the Russian leadership against earthquake in Armenia. Spring of 2002 predicted a helicopter crash. Uh, so now he's 86. But he says following events in Ukraine, he saw um, that President Zelensky will surrender and will take place. He confidently said Zelensky will soon flee the country to Poland or one of the Baltic states, most likely Lithuania. According to the psychic, the current president of the Ukraine is very worried and fears for his future. Um, honestly, I'm worried, but I don't see the result. I'm confused in my thoughts and my actions. He will think everything over in time, but it'll be too late. According to Foman Zelensky, he has an unstable psyche and is easily controlled from the outside. Yep. With his unstable psyche, he looks like Biden. Therefore, they work on the same vibrations, said the psychic. Looking into the future, um, he, he said he does not see him live to the end of his term. D will not live to see that. I guess that means he's going to die. He will step down from the presidency. He says this could happen around September 17th, which is only five days from now. Yeah, so I've seen that he's not going to survive it either. He's going to be killed. Um, that's what I've seen on the timeline, um, that he's going to, what I saw is he's going to flee 
Um, his military his generals are pretty pissed with all of his um, things he's doing to please the West, the, you know, the powers that be, the Western groups, and NATO, UN, US, etc. Um, what I got is Latvia, not Lithuania, but he will be, you know, I don't know if they'll put it in the news, but he'll be taken out in Latvia. That's what I was so, seeing. Well, well, what about all this hundreds of billions of dollars that Biden's been given in aid to the Ukraine? What, what happened to all that money? 80% of it is laundered and put in big accounts. He has quite a few amazing million dollar properties all over the world, including Florida, um, as, long, as well as all of those in power that we see in the media in, that are supposedly running this country or their families, their children have accounts where it's being laundered through. 80 plus percent of the weapons are going out on the dark um, web and being auctioned off uh, and going into terrorist groups all over the world. And of the medical supplies and the other things, same thing goes there. It's being very little of it is being, um, actually there's a, a magazine that put this out that it was 70% um, about two months ago. And then they said, oh no, no, that was two months ago. It's all fixed now. Uh, yeah, it's fixed. It's not 70%. It's above 80%. They, they fixed leaks and more of it's now being taken away from the people that need it. So again, that's nothing but a bunch of crime over there. That's the home of the name changers, the Khazarians it always has been. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted to have Israel as a satellite state that they created through the, uh, and Palestine annexed in th that they created with Hitler through the um, transfer agreement. So it's all a big manipulation and stuff. And Zelensky is just an actor and a comedian. Yeah, other than that, he's pretty much not that sharp to be able to do what he needs to do. He always seems to be getting stuck into um, the uh, marching powder, allegedly. Um, and yeah, I've seen some pretty. Uh, yeah, he's like, that too. Um, yeah, there's a. Uh, northern northern european country uh leader that's part of the they call it the flower children in other words the white stuff but they call themselves the flower children people oh, wow. will know who i mean by just just that they'll know exactly what premier head of state i'm talking yeah. about that was recently somewhat inappropriate, let's put it that way, as a head of a country. I mean, I don't care what you do in your private time, but if you're that of a country, keep it private, please. Thank oh, you. is that Finland or something, uh, where there was a PM partying or something like that? I think I saw something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I had a quick I, question about the G7 countries, how um, they've all been supporting Ukraine and encouraging um you know, our government, like our government in Australia as well, sent millions over. And there's uh, farmers going hungry here and there's uh, flood victims and fire victims still they haven't had any government support. And yet, you know, Zelensky's receiving millions even from the coffers of our taxpayers alone, let alone um, the billions from the US and every other G7 country. Um, so just to kind of uh, wrap up that little piece of what you're saying there, Gene, and uh, hoping, you know, people to kind of you know, learn a little bit more about how this works. Pretty much it's a massive uh, laundromat in Ukraine for everyone to get their slush funds and their uh, safety net to, you know, their promised um, well, whatever I, it is. I think they're using the money to uh, pay off um, what, what was an uh, Italian uh, weapons contractor that was flipping the votes. Uh, Michael Was it Michelangelo? I, I can't remember the name of it. But uh, yeah, I think Hillary Clinton spent $4 billion to flip the vote in the 2016 election, which didn't work in her favor because she didn't spend enough money. So uh, apparently now it costs more than $4 billion <laughs> to win a, a presidency election. To cheat. Yeah, that, uh, anyway. <laughs> Gene. Is that the Leonardo satellite link that they did that? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, it's Leonardo. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's hard to remember all this crazy stuff that the <laughs> world does. Freaking crazy. Uh, and, you, know, you know, and Mike Lindell has shown all the hooks can, into China. And then, of course, the 2,000 mules, which is way, way more mules than that. 
um, as well. So yeah, now it's billions <laughs> to flip it. I think they're going to, they're going to round them all up. The, even the FBI, uh, the 17 intelligence agencies that are working with uh, Q are going to go after the, the FBI. And uh, I think the, the CIA has also toast for uh, what they've done um, against Trump. And of course, so much more than just that. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. And they're also going to go after those mules. They're going to be thrown in prison too. Yeah, because what people don't realize is how many cameras there are. And all but they also have they, they they can also tag their phones too. They know yeah. who all these people are. They they have their accounts and yeah. So the phones ping all the time. If you've got a cell phone that has GPS or location or you know you can ask it how to get from where you are to somewhere else, it's pinging you all the time, and they know right where you are, and it's monitoring all your bio functions everything it's uploading everything and then with the stuff that's in the jab that now uploads everything that you are all your thoughts feelings emotions memories genetics everything and there's a virtual you and you're you're squawking the bluetooth signal <laughs> you know I, people are showing in graveyards they can get a bluetooth app for their phone and go and see six feet down and three feet in front of me i got a bluetooth signal so uh, you can go yeah, and people walk you same thing i'm going to share my screen again this is um this is on super soldier talk this post here disclosure we are in 4d now is the name of the the post but uh it has some information also about the moon i want to share next but this right here says queen elizabeth had a firstborn son it was not charles and this is why charles knew he would never be king william might have been a confusion marker helped to conceal the truth the real antichrist was to be hidden son of queen lizzie and is artificially inseminated by the rothschilds uh, the rose reference here goes back to the little queen, the snake, and um, I don't know if I said like George Lee, Gre Gregory Hallett. The, uh, he claims he's a, he has a place in the king's throne of flip us on earth. What do you think of the George Hallett? Is he uh, is he the <laughs> hidden king? New Zealand guy. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I've I've heard of that all, that whole thing before. So he's actually not the firstborn son there either. So it wouldn't be him. Okay. He has an older brother. Hmm. Well, you want to comment about the moon, the techno. Uh, so the moon, apparently there was actually, I, I'm going to just show this because it's, it's easier to show you than tell you here. Yeah, please yeah, do. The moon a space so we got here. Um, uh, the on anarchy. The Anunnaki first, uh, I guess they targeted Mars 18,000 years ago. Um, it says here, the planes were forced to retreat. Uh, the Anunnaki then, I uh, say so the moon, it says Anunnaki under Zetic control using nuclear weapons attacked the moon in several locations on the Earth. I guess this is 13,000 years ago, resulting in nuclear war. And that's why we see the craters on the moon. The moon is a Palladian spaceship brought here almost 26,000 years ago for a very complex set of reasons. Do you have, do you agree with that, Gene? Um, not the time frames, but the moon was towed, if you, uh, into place, uh, uh, well, not towed, but brought into place. Um, it's a satellite system, a arc to bring in and also to create a um, soul trap to... yeah the net over the earth and the souls are caught and then the moon room beams the soul to the rings of saturn that's a a loop antenna and then they're taken in and met by holograms they're taken in the south polar storm that looks like the all-seeing eye and the dollar bill then when they're done being manipulated in the cities of holographic cities in saturn they come back out and their memories are erased in the hexagonal storm through what are called the veil system and then they're sent back here and so that's part of the moon's function um the craters you see on this side of the moon are actually due to the war but primarily the big ones especially um especially um the orientale crater that has ring collapse because the moon is hollow it rings and so it's, it has ring collapse on it um those are due to bombardment when First, the Atlanteans fired at full 
that I mentioned earlier, the Lemurians shot back. And so the craters you see are particle beams. That's why when they first orbited the moon with the, the uh, orbiter and they were on the moon, when they were at 50 miles up, I believe, if I remember correct. Then they adjusted it to 100 or 150 miles, depending on which timeline we're on. Um, if you went there with limited fuel, if you're going to raise the altitude of the orbiter, it's got to be incredibly important because it decreases your stay time on there. You have to leave much earlier uh, because you're burning fuel to race it. So when they went around the backside, some of the Ant Atlantean cities are still standing. Some of the huge transparent aluminum and titanium uh, buildings are still standing. And some of those are over 100 miles high. They were seeing buildings going by the window. They're like, oh, what was that? <laughs> this is not good. So they came back from the dark side. They go, uh, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> well, is that the Apollo, so, um, the Apollo 17 footage of the cathedral city on the moon? Yeah. Because I just interviewed Jimmy Payne. He was on that mission. And we go all into that in another episode on Super Soldier Talk. But yeah, evidently. They um they were going over. Of course, they were also trying to get uh, the Mona Lisa being, but um, yep. And then there's also was a Look magazine article where they showed a bridge on the moon that was two to three miles long. Um, different bridges, two and three miles long from Mount Palomar that were photographed, and those were again on this side, fallen buildings. And there's many, many debris, and you can actually see it in the some of the footage they show you is filmed by uh, on Earth. And some of the footage is filmed on the moon because they can't show you the crater wall because it had Draco ships all around the crater <laughs> looking at it. And look, I was like, hello. <laughs> you know? So they were like, uh, first they came out and they didn't say one small step for man. They planted a Masonic plaque and claimed it for the for the Masonic Brotherhood. Then they went back up and came back down again. And then, you know, so there's a lot of, you don't want to crash the thing in and go, oops. So they had a backup plan in case they make a mistake and it doesn't work or there's things you can't show so they can splice and dice the footage. And then of course they had to adjust it because of the big, huge buildings on the backside and all kinds of things. And the stuff they saw is they had to, sign an NDA and all kinds of stuff before they left because they already knew they were going to see some stuff, but the stuff they saw was beyond. I mean, there's uh, a guy that when I first started waking up 30 plus years ago, showed me a picture of the lunar rover driving around a lake. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> he goes, this is from the backside. It's being bounced off a satellite. Here, on the this is the cathedral, the cathedral city. Yep. Wow, 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 wow. Beautiful. So uh, Jimmy Payne was talking about, I think William Rutledge was actually the, the astronaut filming this because he was on the, they split up the, the two vessels because um, th they went there for two reasons. The Apollo 17 mission was a failure. So they went there to investigate that, what happened. And he said that the, uh, the, uh, the, cra the, uh, the, the capsule, the Apollo 17 capsule, uh, was penetrated by, I think probably Grays went in there and shot them all up because all the, the astronauts were, were bleeding out or with their carcass, or whatever is left. And that was his job. But um, Rotledge was over here to explore the uh, this craft here where Mona Lisa was. And this is the uh, vessel. Let's see if yeah. I can get a better picture. There's a pit vessel and there's, there's all sorts of sigils on here. Um, I think these are like protection sigils. Um, this is the same they, mission where they found that lady as well. Those mummies. yeah, the Mona Lisa. They brought. Yeah, they yeah, said yeah, they yeah, brought yeah. her back, and um, she she's been in stasis for nearly forty thousand years, so she's still alive. But um, I think they took her body down to Area Fifty One. I would not be surprised if she's still. Pro she's probably still there. Real life Fifth Element, or if, if you remember that movie. If, if yeah. They, like, she day, is. My goodness. Yeah. I wonder how many strands of DNA she has. That'd be really incredible. Yeah, Jimmy was um, the reason why he was brought on the mission is because Mona Lisa reached out to him to, to, using telepathy, and because um, he was stationed, I think it was at Sandia, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think oh, that was in right. Uh, yeah, I don't think that was accurate. Um, I forgot the, what base he was actually at. Um, he talks about it in the video, but um, 
yeah, he was just just um, somebody in the you know a recruit in the military, and he started getting all these downloads. So so that made him more qualified to be on this mission than than you know people they've been grooming all their life. So it just shows you that um, the universe chooses you. That that's what it is. It doesn't matter what what uh, what the cabal, cabal wants. But uh, there you have it. So have you seen enough? Because I can I'm going fantastic. Turn this off. I could watch this forever, James, but um, <laughs> I'm definitely happy to keep moving along just for the sake of, um, you know, all of uh, us to cover as much as we can without um, chewing up um, all of Gene's time and your time as well. So, yeah, I just want to sort of check in, see uh, how much longer both you both had um, to stay with us. Um, otherwise, we could reschedule another show. I got what time, James. I'm fascinated with James's stuff, so. Well, I had like two or three more questions. Yeah, uh, go, so yeah, I think we can just do that, that and I can wrap this up. But uh, uh, well, actually, it's like two. It says here, what happens to people who took the hydras and the vaccine? Will they lose their soul or will they be healed from the solar flash in 2031? He's <laughs> saying, Gene. Yeah, solar flash will wipe everything slick. So if, vaccinated if, people are not going to go to positive timeline? The... If you're a positive person and being in service to others, it'll eradicate it. If you're not, it will make it worse. If you're in service to others and, you know, believing in a supreme creator and trying to do your best to be in service to others and creator, God, Father, however you look at it, um, you'll be given a healing blast if you're in service to self and cabal and all that structure, it'll be amplified and it'll be zombie apocalypse time. And that's the split of the timeline right there. That's the final split where they completely veer apart. Is that where meta comes into play in the sense that the zombie apocalypse would happen where people are going to obviously have that meltdown and uh, their consciousness is no longer there and they just become crazy. Is there um, what they're planning as well, where they upload that consciousness so they've got their own fabricated version of reality where people just, um, you know, go in the lower timeline, go into that um, metaverse, so to speak. Does that um, tie in with this? Well, you got to realize when you come to a peduncle like that, a peduncle is like you see in an hourglass where all the sand goes down to where this peduncle is so small that you only have two timelines coming out of it. One is positive, absolute. One is absolute and negative. And then from there, they can split back off into variations of each other. So you have a separation of the wheat from the chaff at that point, and the positive splits apart from the negative, unlike it's been for you know hundreds of million years. Now the positive lines will be separate and the negative lines will be separate. So it's honoring absolutely then from then on, the will of God and God's law of choice being the first law, which is you get what you choose and you, your choices you pay for you, you, what you plant, you reap. And so it's been a mixture where choice has been violated significantly on earth. Um, after that, that won't be the case unless you're that type of a person where you're the type of person that would do that. Then you wind up on a place where that is the nature of it. And that, that place will be all those timelines that go. So you have a variety that will go spread out eventually to be infinite again of negative or positive. Thank you for that. Have you got any further so, uh, things you want to show, James? Jimmy, Jimmy Payne was stationed at the at Holloman Air Force Base when Mona Lisa contacted him, and then he was transferred to Vandenberg, where they uh, were shooting off the Apollo, the secret Apollo 17 thing. It, all the way up to 20, if I'm not mistaken. It's like four of them. Um, okay, so uh, can uh, Gene, can you comment about the oceans underneath the comp continents? Supposedly, you can take a submarine underneath California all the way to the Atlantic. What are these giant oceans underneath the continents? Um, there are tunnel systems that they made you, that tie into the aquifers, which are a lot of them are almost ocean sized. So for example, if you look at the Everglades, that's actually a big, huge river flowing at about two knots towards the sea. 
So it's slowly moving towards the sea. The whole Everglades is just a big giant river. Well, underneath all of your major rivers, except for the, of course, again, the, the Colorado River, you've got huge underground river systems or aquifers that are moving towards the continental shelf. So if you look at the Nile underneath that is a massive, I mean, it's essentially the whole part of ha like ha over half the size of Africa heading towards the, the you know, where the Nile empties, it empties out underneath in there. And so these, they've tapped into those and they have these submarine tunnel systems and they've mapped all that out with high frequency sonar that has very high resolution to where you could literally read braille with it in a book. So you can, they've mapped out all of this system, just like you see in Hunt for Red October, where they mapped out the, um, some of the rifting system and they were driving the submarine, the Red October through that, which I, by the way, actually did happen. That's actually an actual event that occurred. And they did get a typhoon defected, uh, captain defected a, with a typhoon. That's actually for real. And so they can take a submarine all the way underneath Europe or all the way underneath Africa or all the way underneath Asia and come out, go in from the South China Sea and come out in the Atlantic. Um, so they have these systems and part of the whole purpose of it was for their dumps that they were wanting to nuke the planet and, and, and or pandemic the planet and wipe out all life up here and have seed banks and all that and go underground into these massive cities like under Denver's eight cities down, eight or 10, I, I, depending on your timeline. And they're, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they're incredible. I mean, the technology and the beauty and, you know, they have light that comes up and it looks like day and parks and deer and trees and all of that stuff. And so they were going to go down there, but to power it, what they were going to do is bring in nuclear submarines. Because people don't realize how much power one nuclear submarine generates. When I was stationed in Pearl Harbor, when I was getting ready to retire, the island of Oahu blew its power grid, the whole island. And so what happened was the New York City, which was tied up in Pearl at the time, just brought its nuclear power lines, its nuclear power system up only to 80 percent and even bring the reactor full online they just came up to 80 percent power not 100 percent like they can run underway and they brought in bigger shore power lines so they could reverse the current and they powered up the whole island <laughs> from one nuclear submarine i mean just the new york city powered the island of oahu for a few days and jump-started the power plants on on the island and so that's what they plan to do with the nuclear submarines was to power these huge, massive underground cities or, you know, DOMS is not really the right word because it's not a military facility. It's a city for the elite. And that's why they, you know, all the food and they're not worried about food. The Alliance is not worried about food. All the food and everything is down there and, and there's food available. They have decades and shop check this stores. out. Does they, yeah. they found food and drink hidden by the cabal for consumption that could feed the whole world for the next 150 years, 14.2 billion tons of high quality food. They were, they also analyzed samples of this food and they said they did not contain toxic substances that are normally released to the general population. Wow. Yeah. So I guess, I guess they're not going to let us have, <laughs> they weren't planning, planning let us have any. Uh, waiting food. till they clear out the cabal. Once <laughs> they clear that out. Um, that's also no GMO. That's one hundred percent organic. Cheeky monkeys! I'm I'm, I'm dumbfounded by that. <laughs> so, so they yep. think like poisoning our food up here on purpose with Monsanto, everything else, allegedly, of course. Um, while they've been <laughs> keeping the good food for themselves, essentially going, ah, eh, we're just gonna, you know. Um, wipe the scorch earth, the, the surface, and uh, we're going underground and blah blah blah. And let me guess, did they have one of those elite um palace type uh, underground areas in Australia by any chance, Gene and James? Oh, yeah, of course. And was that about last year and shattering their dreams? <laughs> yep, everything you know, Pine Gap's actually now in the Alliance hands, too. Really? Oh, wow, yep, fantastic. Yeah, there cool. were some mines that they went in through mines and got in there through that way. There was a whole bunch of military vehicles 
going to mines that were a, a, a few tens of miles away from Pine Gap. And that was like one of their, that's probably their biggest stronghold. On Pine Earth. Gap. Other than, yep, other than Antarctica. What about uh, Congo? Um, what is a uh, um, that's speaking technologically? Yeah, supposedly the archons come through. There's uh, dumb down there. Yeah, um, Big one that, if you want to talk about um, military presence, not technological, the largest one is South Africa. The lower one third of South Africa is a dumb. So that's probably going to be the last place on Earth going to 5D. Yeah. That's a massive oh well. mess. Well, it's going to happen sooner or later. They're going to learn their lesson one way or the yeah. other. How about this? Uh, Can you comment about um, Elon Musk? He has never actually invented anything. DARPA invented Neuralink, Starlink, and Elon Musk is just a front man puppet. They bring the stuff out in the public to normalize it. His job is only to party up, make stupid tweets, and make the WEF CIA brain chip seem cool. Here's a so pictures here showing DARPA sniffs that Elon Musk didn't give them any credit for Neuralink's sewing machine, which they funded. And also the U.S. military is working on a secretive network of spy satellites codenamed Black Jack, Jack that will blanket the Earth's orbit. So that's basically the, the Sky, sky um, not Skynet, but um, Starlink. What do you think of that? Is, is, is Elon Musk a white hat or is he, is he playing both sides or what do you think? Um, from what I've been shared with, if it's correct, we don't have the original anymore. Mm. The Alliance replaced him. So he was negative at first, but now I guess he's uh, he's just another yep. one of their puppets <laughs> for the positive. He yep. was replaced at Palladian, wasn't he? Not sure about that, but right. I know, mm. you know, what I know is what I said. Well, what do you think about Starlink? Is that uh, is that part of the WEF agenda that's probably negative, or has that also been hijacked by the Alliance to turn positive? Also hijacked, also hijacked and positive. Okay. Yeah, I know, because Elon Musk was given a bunch of Starlink access to uh, in the Ukraine. I guess he was trying to, to promote that, but he's like, well, what side of the fence is he working for here? Yeah, yeah, it's confusing as heck. It's uh, a lot of people have that question. What about those satellites in uh, around the Ukraine that were uh, shot down allegedly with a solar flare? They said in the news a couple of months back. You remember that? Um, that actually was an alliance op to take it out, a part that they hadn't gotten control of okay. to get it completely in their control and then put those back up correctly. Fantastic. Um, any other questions or presentations you want to put on? Um, like if you've got a show presentation, Gene, would love to hear your um, decode if you've got one as well. Um, I'll let James talk first and then I'll finish out. Okay. All right. Well, go to my website, uh, supersoldiertalk.com. You can go check that article I had uh, out there, the 4D disclosure article. Also, um, Jimmy Payne, the link to Jimmy Payne's Apollo 7, uh, actually, I think it's 19th mission. The 17th was the one that, that crashed on the moon. Uh, not crashed, but they, they got killed when they were on the moon, the secret mission. Uh, it's also a YouTube channel, but uh, there's the, the uncensored for channels on Root Rumble. So it's, please, I prefer, I, I, it's best to describe both there. Also, go to neologicaltech.com. You get yourself a copy of my book. Um, about some of my experiences in the SSP, as well as a meditation cube over here. I've got one or here. So these are at neologicaltech.com. Uh, it's a link. Um, you could always you could just go to Super Soldier Talk, and there's a link there. Um, but I also have a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, if you want to make a donation, I use the money to fund the uh, travel expenses because I'm going to two conferences in October to interview a bunch of people, and all those conferences are very expensive. <laughs> Uh, on a budget, but um, anyway, so that's all I have to say there <laughs> about that. And my my nonprofit is uh, healingsoulsurvivors.org. If you want to just go directly to that website, thank you. Fantastic. If you send me um, that with the writing, I'll uh, add it to uh, the Rumble video um, after the stream as well, just so everyone that watches this, um, yeah, will be able to furnish themselves with everything you need and all they need rather. Um, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for that, James, and for everything you contribute. To the community as well we uh and especially myself really appreciate that 
Yeah, James is so brilliant. I mean, it's just like I feel like a deer in headlights. I my I'm just like blinded. <laughs> just so, <laughs> even, so much information. I'm just like, oh my goodness, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit dumbstruck with my words right now. You know, it's like, wow, yeah. I'm being illuminated both sides here in stereo. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, but, so, yes, the, now I'm losing my words. Uh, I was just going to say, <laughs> is there a project that you can uh, talk about upcoming that you're working on together, potentially? suspense are you asking me what yeah, projects I'm both of yeah yeah like uh, any upcoming uh collaborations is a better way to frame it uh maybe we can do this event uh with the elders because uh, uh october 28th 2023 the elders is supposed to be reappear and uh be great if we could have a little event a welcoming party because all those people are probably expecting because from montauk they were told there's gonna be nuclear war although it wasn't it's not supposed to happen it's supposed to happen <laughs> Um, the timelines changed, but um, I think it was going to happen around 2025, actually. But um, I don't. I, th that's not going to happen here. But the point is, was was welcome men, uh, welcome them to a positive timeline Earth, uh, and maybe give you know, and give them some. That'd be exciting. And then also the med beds supposedly are going to be coming out uh, when yep. the timeline show. <laughs> I don't know how accurate this information is, but apparently it looks like. Maybe we'll we'll get rid of off uh, the the midterms. Look like they're going to go on as they might be hijacked, and they might stop them and put push it out till March, and then maybe put it on a blockchain, and then um, maybe in twenty twenty four. It looks like I hate to say this JFK Jr. stuff, possibly, but not as the president of the U.S., but as the president of the North American um, continent country. area. It looks like the United States looks like everything is being reorganized. Each continent has their own leader. Um, and then in 2028, possibly Ivanka Trump, not necessarily. So Trump is possibly coming back and he's going to be also the leader of this new super region. But I, like I said, everything, I, I'm only giving you information that I came through through remote viewing sources. So I can't verify or until we get to the, that particular timeline. But uh, some of what you I said, know, Gene, what, w said to me when we chatted last year about uh, how Australia, uh, Canada, United States might be forming a super federation with the name Federation of the United States. And uh, that's really interesting to say that because that could well, under right. yeah, I mean, it's under the Don's number. Uh, the Australian uh, Commonwealth is a corporation just like the United States. And, and if the QO, operation has taken taken over all the asset because under the trump executive order um i forgot exact maybe gene might know what it is where if they're if you're involved in human trafficking then all your assets can get seized so if the corporation was involved in human trafficking then theoretically the united states corporation and the, which was owned by the um well there's different i'm um, the crown of england also the federal reserve owners Correct. 30 300 families of the federal reserve and uh um yeah but the point is is that uh it's possible yeah the, all these corporations could be taken over and but but i, I think australia may i don't know <laughs> Gene, well, i had a look <laughs> online on edgar search and also um through dunn and brad street and um all of our states here registered over with you guys as well as uh the commonwealth of australia itself um every single department of the government uh, and it's really fascinating because if what you're saying is true, then technically, I mean, here's one as well that a lot of Australians are wondering. Our Prime Minister now, who was um, running up to the election then, wore a face mask with a white rabbit on it. Now, is that a symbolic thing from the white hat side showing that symbol now? Or is that um, symbolic of the dark hat? So I was wondering, because a lot of people had that sort of question mark. We just got to follow the white rabbit. What do you think, Gene? <laughs> um, if you look at the adrenochrome molecule, the way it, it's bonding is, it looks like a rabbit. So I can't imagine a alliance oh individual god. using it. Mm. Oh my god! Yeah, you're mm. you're on. Yeah, you could be onto something there. Yeah, the adrenochrome. Uh, do you think that's ever going to be coming out to the, I mean, 
will, yeah, will the alliance true. tell the population but this is how evil they were or are they going to just keep that just quiet uh, just to keep I think from going crazy eventually come, yeah it'll all eventually come out but i i agree with nate brian that uh who has talks to Valnick frequently you can't do it right away because you're going to put a lot of people in a coma <laughs> you know if they knew what we know and the horrific nature of the draco the alpha draco and other species and how they've been doing to humanity and what they've been doing to children and humanity for so long um and what they worship and you know just the pizza gate people started freaking out um and that's just a tip of a massive iceberg uh you know same as ukraine the majority of what was underneath there that's why they had to go in earlier they're actually underneath it even more than a week before it the 24th date because of the massive nature of tunnel systems under Ukraine is beyond comprehension. I showed it on an interview. It's like a maze. <laughs> it looks like some kind of termite mount, termite mound. You know, it's like what's under um, Israel too. And there's a Draco queen in under Israel. And Alpha Save Draco queen. Last, huh? Is that the red queen? I is some kind of AI? No, this is Nana Enlil's oldest daughter. They left her behind because the males are not capable of functioning without a queen. It's kind of like a beehive. They're a hive mentality, and the queens are the ones that control the hive. So they oh, well, were supposedly they left it, it from Antarctica when they opened, uh, during an eclipse, they opened a portal back to Mentaka, but a majority of them left, but they did leave warriors and other groups here and it turns out now when they got into the vatican and underneath the main tunnels of the vatican and the dumb is all this stuff like under paris all this catacombs of bones and all of all the people they've been eating and they fall cleared out clearing out the bones and the stuff and it goes all the way to israel and then they found out as they were clearing it out there was a draco presence in retreat and they caught sight of her and she's a prime part gold uh, that would be nana inlil's daughter because nana in uh, in inlil is the only pure gold prime left right. but the only ones that can have gold still have to be children of nana inlil so it's believed it's her oldest daughter that's now in Israel. I guess that's why they're saving Israel for last, but they're saying the catacombs under Israel is insane even compared to Ukraine, which, wow, under Odessa is like, I don't even know how you not get lost in there. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. It just And then there's the big maglevs that go like straight from Odessa to Kiev, just straight shot. And they haven't been taken down yet. Also. Oh, yeah. They're in the hands of the Russians. Oh, it's very good to hear that. Um, and I had a... 30, 35 research facilities that were developing new pandemic stuff. Bill Gates even uh, smugly was said with his wife a couple of years ago, oh, wait till the second one hits them. <laughs> kind yeah. of thing. And um, I was thinking, oh, okay. As soon as this uh, Ukraine situation happened, I was uh, I just felt it in my heart that um, you know, uh, that was being stopped and uh, um, yep. that it's been thwarted. Thank goodness for that. Um, and just on the Antarctica part for a second, I remember last year I had an interview with James. I was talking to James about how the uh, elites were on the way to Antarctica to get a nice little surprise from the Alliance. Uh, so they were going down there to try to uh, access the portal, weren't they, and get instructions. Yep and uh, got met with um, the White Hats, didn't they? Can you unpack a bit more about what happened, if you can? Yeah, so there's a uh, Earth control crystal grid system there that the Alliance got a hold of. And, you know, like you said, they thought they're going, um, you don't understand the Draco, and you don't understand the elite. The re you know, they're polluting up here like crazy and all that because mm -hmm. they don't care about you. They don't even think they're the same species as you. And, in fact, they're not. They're mostly hybrided mix mash of stuff, but like the queen, you can't inhabit a body that's not resonant with you. Um, her body had a lot of hybridization with Draco, Alpha Draco, or they can't go in there. 
So that's how she, that thing has been jumping. It's the, that's why they intermarry so frequently, so long, and rarely they take a human well, like Diana in. They take a human in because you get too much inbreeding, you get hemophilia and all these other problems. The other well, reason they do really use. Go ahead, James. Well, what about the Vril? And then explain about the other reason. The Vril, the, the, the little worm-like creatures they put in their eyes that take, take over their consciousness. Yeah, that's a different creature. So that's kind of looks like a Sleezak kind of thing, but it's about three feet tall. They found them when they first started making the tunnels. <clears throat> so when that thing gets to adulthood, it has like a proboscis kind of like thing on top of its head. And they put it over a person who's strapped down on a table over the eye and it goes, it, it blackens the eye. That's why you see the black eye club. Um, and it goes into the eye and there's movies now where they even show it like that. And it goes down the retinal nerve into the brain and it kills the person. And then the person is reanimated by it after it takes over all their memories and stuff. And it lives as the person for about two years, two to three years. And then the person, it loses control over the, it's only got four chakras. It has the first three and the fifth chakra it doesn't have a fourth or sixth or seventh chakra. So it starts losing control of the higher functions because it doesn't have six or seven chakra and it doesn't have the heart chakra either. So the person starts to become an imbecile, kind of like somebody who's running this country <laughs> was during the election. You know, he didn't even know the difference between his wife and his daughter. He is, you know, vote for the other Biden. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, come on. I've got a theory, Gene and James. Tell me if you think this is uh, on the money because it has come up in a regression. The alliance um, sometimes hacks the signal of Biden's uh, consciousness and makes him say the dumbest crap. And um, it's all part of the. Yeah, I, that body, I don't think we have the original because the, once the body, the brain, and the control is so compromised, it dies and, along with the real. So yeah. I think we're so, seeing the fourth rendition of him. I um, remote viewing shows that Biden is in a mental facility. Nobody, not even his family, is associating with him anymore. He's totally forgotten. Um, and then they have doubles like Arthur Roberts, who yep. um, was a third-rate actor. Uh, yep. He is portraying Biden. <laughs> they use some plastic surgery to make him look, look more like it. But he is also he has Alzheimer's. But uh, wait, not Alzheimer's, oh, dementia. Um, and uh, but the other ones, they have other doubles. They're they're doing even worse. So they usually put Arthur Roberts there. But you can go to go to realrawnews.com if you want to read more about the doubles and all that. If you if you believe real raw news anyway. Yeah, I. Um definitely i don't think we have the original because he was falling apart during i mean he like i'm running for you know senate or <laughs> i'm I, I doesn't know what state he's in i mean the guy was falling apart then he couldn't even carry on a debate and well, now you he, can sit there saying stuff that's fairly well done considering you know, i want to ask you a question um and, you know, it, whatever opinion you want to put at this, go ahead. I, I don't mind. But uh, in the um, changes on the um, Horizon documentary I did about Nassara, there were only uh, I think there were only 10 Congress congressional officers who um, complied with the titles of nobility amendment who could actually vote on Nassara. And um, I think, Paul, of course, Paul Wellstone was one of them. But uh, um, apparently also Joe Biden was also on the team working for this. So he was apparently working for the positive at one point. So can you confirm? I mean, based on his history, it looks like he murdered his, some of his family members and come from a car accident back in the seven, 80s and 70s or 70s. So I, I don't know how he could possibly be a white hat at one point and then maybe he got cloned out. Um, what if you help the person, then they control. Him. So if he was taken into a dumb and real, then that would be easily turn him around because it's not him anymore it's the real so Understood. i agree that definitely a high yeah. potential probably yeah a lot of people give me yeah they give me uh, flack for that because i put that out there but i didn't want to change it uh just because i didn't really like it but uh that that was by information related to me by the devil oneness before she died shawnee goodwin 
um, back in 2000. I think she died in 2011 or 2010. But anyway, yeah. um, I, I think we need to probably stop the show. <laughs> I'm getting tired. I'm going to go forever. So I just wanted to comment yeah. on Loch Ness Monster is actually an Aliasaurus, uh, I believe is the correct term. It's a water dinosaur. Not all the water dinosaurs went extinct. And then a lot of times it's actually what people are seeing as the periscope of a submarine because Holy Lock Scotland and a lot of the SSBNs were operating up there. So out of Holy Lock. So um, there's that sub base and they do a lot of operations like um, sea trials before they do their patrols where they go into some of the locks and do sea trials. Interesting. So is Loch Ness Monster um, them doing blue beam just to prank people or is that, um, you know, literally no, a creature? A no, it's a water dinosaur, an Aliosaurus. Did, did you mean a, ple a Pleosaurus? Plesiosaurus. Uh, let me just spell it here. Because um, a, ple a Plesiosaurus looks like the Loch Ness Monster and there's actually yeah. on, on planet. Uh, you're right. Yep, on you're right. The you sit corrected a plesiosaurus because e on um, I uh, don't know on the planet an on the planet typhoon plesiosaurus are also native to that planet or maybe they were introduced but they're uh they're all infe i say infested with the waters they're actually um it's extremely dangerous to be anywhere near these creatures uh people have gotten eaten on the shoreline so um the question is maybe there's portals down in the ocean where these creatures are going from planet to planet. So it may not even, it may not even be na a native population here. It could just be transitionary. Just a yeah. thought, just put out there. I'm not saying that's what this is. Maybe, maybe it's both. Maybe they also like they got here through the portals and <laughs> anyway, so stay maybe. away from please the source. Don't get eaten. Yeah. I think we'll be anyway. right. <laughs> But um, yeah, I look, I, I certainly look at the Mariner Trench and different places in the deep sea as well, and I consider there could be port portals there too, and uh, um, and even in national parks as well. I anywhere the government doesn't want you is probably where they're doing it. Antarctica, I mean, my goodness. Um, yeah. So anyway, James, I uh, know that uh, you probably want a jet, and uh, so please, you saw us. I'll let you go, mate. <laughs> Okay, and then I just wanted to share a few things here before I go. Absolutely, Gene. Okay. You've um, got the floor, not a problem. No rush my end, but mindful of James's time. Okay, so first of all, just for people to watch this interview um, with the Russian Federation representative, it's really, really ex excellent. So what he says is very, very well done and very well structured and really excellent information. Um, this is the four book series. Now I was correct on the timeline we're on. It's the four book Montauk series by, uh, Peter Moon and Preston Nichols. And then I do have a website now, uh, G real, uh, and a rumble channel, real gene decodes, my rumble channel and, um, real gene decodes, my telegram. And this is genedecode.org. So, People, I, it's um, subscription, $7 a month or $77 a year uh, to go in. You just go in. Um, you can either go in here, deep dive, sign up as a month or a year. We'll give you $7 off or essentially like a free month if you do a year. And then when you uh, go in and subscribe, once you're in, you be careful. I just set up another email completely that I only use to go in here. So once you're, you've signed up and you, you're a subscriber, you'll always see the um, liability and disclaimer waiver and have to acknowledge it to get in. And then you'll go in. And I, like I said, I set up a, a website, I mean, an email just to go in here <laughs> and make sure you're really, really careful when you get in here, you, you hunt and pet it because it's unforgiving the host for the website so uh, let's see chimneys there's one two three okay okay so it agrees i'm not a robot so then you'll go in and we've got i'm getting content uh bless for service and myself are getting content up as quickly as we can so i've got a few things like uh hollow earth just aired today 
life. Um, and I've already done the expanding earth. So you can see hollow earth is part two. Part one was the expanding earth. And then part three, of, uh, part two of the hollow earth, this is part two of expanding hollow earth, will be Admiral Byrd with Operation High Jump and his diary. And then we're going to shortly have pampered pet presentations, preparedness, survival, and other things. But we're getting as much, and then lots of Julie B's envisionings are here. Um, Bible study with um, Kathy, pa uh, Pastor Kathy or Shepherd Kathy, Shepherdess Kathy. And then I also did a presentation on the Alpha Draco Prime here. So there's lots of uh, stuff. We're getting ready. The Blessed Service are doing a lot of really great decodes. The Federal Reserve and the Titanic Olympic uh, switcheroo <laughs> and, and all of that, which is a lot of information. So it's, it's really exciting. So that's just the website and where you can find me. So thank you so much, James, for Jim, your patience and time. And Jimmy yeah. Payne was on the, um, he, he said he, they were actually there on, on the, the switcheroo on the, uh, the Olympia and the Titanic and, they went in there, stole the Hope, Hope Diamond to help fund Montauk right before the ship went down into the ocean. They they changed out the plaques and so on, and so that's why they could have uh, changed that out. But. Yeah. So that yeah, that decode's got some real big surprises. The Titanic or the Olympic was not struck by an iceberg. Surprise, surprise. So there'll be a lot of really interesting information in that that some people may never have heard before. So. It's going to be exciting. And then we got the John Titter, Baron Von Trump uh, time travel plan to save the world that will be airing pretty soon. And I've got another one I'm working on, the sacred nature of seven. And then the, the holy triune is represented in nature and then God's proportion and sacred geometry of creation. So lots and lots and lots of stuff we're doing. If you go to my telegram, I've got a kind of list in there of all the stuff I'm going to be doing and you'll know, look forward to doing some projects with James, hopefully in the future. So thank you, James, for your patience and your time and your amazing information today. Really appreciate it. And thanks for having us here, Matt. God bless. Thank you so much, both of you gentlemen. And um, I'll keep the outro here very short, um, but God bless as well. And um uh, I'd just like to finish off with a blessing for everyone saying that, um, you know, we all go within and we're going to uh, create a better future for tomorrow. And uh, just remember each and every day to pray, go within and um, God loves you. And, um, you know, Jean and everyone else that's uh, doing their bit, I'm going to continue to do what they're doing with your support as well. So I really hope you check out the links that I'll put on the video not the live stream one, but the one that's going to uh, be on Rumble. Um, I will add all those links as well. So thank you very much kindly and uh, have a wonderful evening or afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Godspeed. God bless. Stream stopped. Thank you very much for that, guys. Um, yeah. Um, how, how was it for you guys? Did you enjoy the uh, show? Yeah, being with James again is such a it's exciting and an honor. Wow, that was fantastic. Yeah, we, we looks like we're going to need to do a show about the Titanic too yeah. with Jimmy Payne. Yeah, so he can uh, explain because he was actually he went there through Montas. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, it was actually ran by a submarine, a German submarine. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, and what? Bruce Ishmay was not on board. It was a body double. The captain had been switched out on top of it. And were they, uh, was um, JP Morgan trying to kill off all the members that were opposed to the Federal Reserve? All the, yep. you know, the elite? Yep. Yeah. Plus, they had taken off several uh, tons of gold that were loaded onto the Titanic before it's as the Olympic before it set sail. Yeah. Minus, yeah, minus the hope die, <laughs> whatever else they were taking, they smuggled out of there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of artwork and other stuff. Huh. This is unbelievable. The world we live in. Saved. Unbelievable. A hundred years later. The Federal Reserve, <laughs> yeah. The Federal Reserve Act 
of course, on Jekyll Island, was drafted on a table that sits on top of an altar that was the, a sacrifice stone. The tribe of Dan was on the, came across the Atlantic and lived on that island and were kidnapping children of native, native tribes the in that area. The Timacon, the Timacon tribe. Yeah. Timacon. Because I, I, I went to Jekyll Island last December to do a video. I was in front of the the house where they that allegedly they were sacrificing children, the Timicon tribe, and then the Rockefellers built a house over it. And uh, I was doing a presentation about uh, the time. It was actually a message from Saint, Saint Germain about what these people have done with the Federal Reserve. But um, you can yeah. check that one out if you want. Yeah. What they've done with the Federal Reserve is hijack the world, create endless wars and suffering and misery. In, in the presentation I did, I mean, I talk about that, but I also mentioned that there was an alternate timeline where the Federal Reserve didn't exist. And in that timeline, we didn't have World War I, World War II, because the big banks and big corporations weren't able to finance it. Um, and also there were a bunch of small businesses. We didn't have like these mega corporations, mega shops all over the place. It was all little small mom and pop shops. Wow. It was actually kind of a nice place to live. Um, I mean, I not everything was perfect over there, but. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. I'm going to go visit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Jekyll Island? <laughs> no, that timeline. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was asking if that was Tartaria, James that timeline uh you know i've got some information in tartaria it looks like it's in another alternate reality okay. and there was a period in during world war one where the two timelines merged temporarily where some of the the uh cities materialized and then since dematerialized but um tartaria seems to be working with putin it actually looks like remote viewing putin he's actually from tartaria this other alternate okay. reality I got that. And that's what, why Putin seems like, of course, there, there was a version. Of, they say he's been, he was changed out in 2013. He supposedly there was a trial that showed that he died because he was so evil. And then they changed him out with another double or something. Maybe the double is from Tartaria. I, I really don't know how this is going to work out, Gene. <laughs> <In> my mind, <laughs> well, blowing your mind, too. It's a cluster. I know he was executed and switched out. And, you know, those people that are behind that CSRQ software, they, they look everybody up in the system. He's not, apparently, he's not in the system. They can't figure, this person that's called Putin, they, they don't know who he is. He doesn't really exist in the system at all. So he may not even be from here, meaning, but also, they also looked up Jeffrey Epstein and he does have an account. So he is still alive. <laughs> Jeffrey's not dead. <laughs> yep. It was drone footage just published in Indian News um, with uh, him looking up at the drone. Um, and that was after he uh, allegedly had died in prison and all that. And the account's still active. And the Cayman, $12 million renovating the place. So, yeah, interesting stuff. I hope there's justice for the, for the kids mostly. Yeah, definitely. Hey, everyone. So I've had a lot of people reaching out and asking how I'm doing with the sheep pox. Um, and how I'm feeling so far I'm feeling really good I'm you know um I'm, um you know <laughs> the eating all the nutritional food that the government keeps telling me to eat um I keep clipping them back a bit they spread quite quickly hopefully I don't get any more and um and whatnot so they told me I just gotta wait it out and <laughs> see what happens thank goodness it could be so much worse if i didn't already have five vaccines <laughs> yeah so much worse if you hadn't had five <laughs> so, something hilarious <laughs> so did that one did a great job eating crickets <laughs> um, <laughs> that's good <laughs> I think that's the best thing we could all do as well is like find things to laugh at about all this. And, you know, it's great. <laughs> See some crazy. You know, we're going to have to eat crickets and they're, they have cricket flour you can buy now. Yeah. I've and also, what, what do you think about the cricket milk? Have you heard of that one, Gene? 
I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> That's a new one. I have to check into that. <laughs> I'm just Cricket like picturing him on a milk pump. Anyway, cricket milk, that wouldn't taste very good. Yeah. How do you milk a cricket? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. I was just saying, like, micro farm. <laughs> Farmer goes in with tweezers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and a microscope or a magnifying glass <laughs> exactly just as long as it's not dog's milk um <laughs> yeah, scientists, especially uh, scientists those back legs they're sharp scientists say that cockroach milk is three times more nutritious than cow's milk oh they'll know <laughs> oh my I didn't know insects had milk. I thought only mammals had milk. <laughs> yeah, true. Hilarious. Thank you very much, Chad. Take care. Wonderful day. Thank you. Very welcome. See you, everyone. Bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. The future now. I am an expression of myself, an experience of my expression from Source Energy. I do not live here. I come here to help, support, assist, co-create. I am no better or lesser than any of you, anyone listening to this. I, uh, my soul, my light, whatever word you'd like to use, these are incomplete statements. These words are very limited to explain it, resides in Source Energy full time. I come here to help. Does that make sense? I am from Source. This is how it works. I reside yeah. in this body 150 times a second, approximately. Mm -hmm. I am directly from source energy. And when you go out in the universe from the central crystal, you are either, uh, say, a permanent creating soul, light being, or you're, say, a temporary one. So many souls, many light beings come out into the universe to create. And if souls, light beings, whatever you'd like to call them, um, don't create, there's no place to play, if you will. There's no creation. That's how incredibly powerful you are. You go out and you create. Some souls, like myself, we are attached to source permanently and never let go of it to help support, assist, extend the, the vastness of the universe. But the real heroes will always be the souls, the light beings that are out here permanently. Does that make sense? Our, our integrity is through telepathy. At the higher frequencies, you do not use, although you have the capability, you do not use verbal communication because okay. we are able to be inside each other's energies instantly all the time. There is a solution for all of there are solutions to living a life of inspiration and synchronicity. Use your heart to make your decision, not your mind. Go within. Thank you.